to be moving well in warm-ups, but will not start at least the first play from scrimmage. Well, we have a moment as they attend to the injured Dolphin linebacker Thomas. Here is the defense for Miami. Doug Betters, Bob Baumhauer, who has a bad ankle. They didn't know whether he would start or not, but apparently will open the game. Kim Bocamper completing the front of that uh, killer B defense. Bob Brzezinski, A.J. Douay, Mark Brown for Ernest Roan and Charles Bowser, who likes the blitz. And the deep four for Miami, Lankford and Judson at the corners. We're going to see Don McNeil uh, sometime during the game, who is uh, the top cornerback for Miami. Blackwood and Blackwood are the safety men. There's Talk Baumhauer. To, uh, Baumhauer yesterday. He did not know yesterday. In fact, did not know today. He said, I would like to play. I want to be out there. I, you see Rodell Thomas going off the field there, being very cautious with him. And of course, with x-ray facilities here at the stadium, they will know very quickly. I will we'll update you on the report from the Miami locker room and overtime Cincinnati still alive for a wild card spot defeating Cleveland 2017 actually going after Pittsburgh and the Steelers were losing last we heard in Houston St. Louis keeps their hopes uh, still aflame as they defeat New England up at Foxborough 33 to 10. So Thomas now very gingerly they are taking him back to the training facilities and obviously the precautions against a possible head or neck injury. Let's set it very quickly for the teams on the field. The Raiders would like to dominate and control the football. That's one way of keeping Dan Marino on the sideline with that potent Miami offense. Wilson, now a minus one touchdown to interceptions, and he comes out throwing. Dumps it off to Kenny King. King cut back against the grain to the 30 and has about eight yards to the 33. Langford and Brzezinski in on the stop. Another final score in the Battle of New York played in New Jersey. The Giants 20, the Jets 10. The Giants are still in a favorable position in the NFC East. Henry Lawrence was very slow getting up on that last play. That's a great battle down there between Lawrence and Betters. Betters a powerful defensive end, excellent pass rusher. That was going at it tooth and nail. the play forced it wide and he has excellent speed makes it he leads the Dolphins in tackles this year great penetration to force King to try and change his route and King stumbled I think there's some loose turf out there this field chewed up badly by the play during the rainy season looked like his leg kind of went out from underneath him Dick but there is Bowser taking advantage of that miscue with help from Langford and it forces a third and three situation comes in to punt for the Los Angeles Raiders as Wilson talks with head coach Tom Flores. Fulton Walker will be the deep man for Miami. He stands back at the 25. Guy having an excellent year, just under 43 yards of punt, and that's his career average. He's punted for about 21 miles. Ray Guy. Short. Oh, Walker, an excellent job of sprinting up to catch that ball on the fair catch. And Miami will begin at its 36 or 7-yard line. 33-yard punt by Guy. They said in the Raider camp this week he punted more than he has in quite some time because he wants to duel Reggie Roby, the young punter of Miami today. There's Dan Marino looking for the NFL record with his 37th touchdown pass. Nathan and Bennett, the running backs. Duper and Clayton, the speedsters outside, the tight end Dan Johnson. Offensive line of Eastler Foster, Stevenson, an all-pro center, Newman, the strongest, and Cleveland Green, who did a great job on Gaston on Monday night. Doesn't have any rest. He's got Howie Long this week. 35-yard line they begin, and Marino guns it off the chest of Mark Clayton, who was open on the near sidelines, had fallen, gotten up, and the ball was there. Mike Haynes on the coverage. And it would appear, Dick, that this 
fragile turf is going to be a factor. Clayton planted his feet. They literally shot out from underneath him. He left a couple of big tear marks in the field and had that ball bounced into the air would have been tough. We saw the front three of the Raiders, Van Pelt, Millen, Squirrick, and Martin Millen starting after being out for five, six weeks. Hayes and Haynes, what an interesting story. The two all-pro cornerbacks against the young speed of the Dolphins, Davis and McElroy. And McElroy will be a busy man because oh, he's going to be playing that deep safety spot. He's looking into the eyes of the quarterback all day. Joe Carter in the backfield now for Miami. A gain of six. Carter ripped off a long run of over 50 yards in the preseason when Miami won at Los Angeles in the Coliseum against the Raiders. Very interesting that the two teams have really started as in almost opposite directions. We expected the Raiders to come out and try and establish the running game. Certainly expected Marino to come out throwing, but they just kind of fooled us up here in the booth. Coach is going against those possible pregame plans. You know, they'll be out there a while. I think we'll see the true uh, character and colors of both teams uh, soon. Marino out of the shotgun. As you can see, uh, the Raider defense second only to the Bears, and Miami the number one offense. is celebrating. It might have been Cleveland Green who put the clamps on him. Fountain comes in on at Howie Long's position. Howie will move to the inside and they're going to march it back against the Dolphins. It was a fine move. A little one-on-one -on -one head to head battle there. Duper Holding against Hayes. Open number 74. Cleveland Green. This is the, the shot of the kind of thing we're going to see all day. The Raiders determined that they are going to get to Dan Marino. There was Cleveland Green, left side of your picture, just tackling from the back side on 93, Greg Townsend. And, of course, you saw the catch there by Duper coming across the side. So third down and 14 for Marino. Good pressure again by the Raiders. Good call. Tom Flores about these young receivers. He said not only do they have great speed, but they have the kind of quickness that allows them to get open. Watch the little loop right there by Clayton. That's Davis trying to cover in front. Haynes at the short and deep kind of coverage on, on Clayton. He simply found the gap. And did you see him jump for that football? And what hands? You know, a lot of those fellas that can run like the wind don't have the greatest hands in the world, but Duper and Clayton seem to catch everything. That was a 22-yard play. Marino in trouble, and he throws that away, and no penalty, because Nathan was right there on the ground. Marino had the presence of mind to throw it near a white shirt. He's not used to being sacked, you know. He's been down only seven times all year long, and the Dolphins have allowed only eight sacks. Smart play by Marino. The blitz is on. Mike Davis coming. They've got great pressure on him. Little screen pass. He's not going to have a chance to get it away. He flips that one into the ground. The official right there, I think, yelling at Davis, back off, pull off of that quarterback, or I'll throw the flag. Second down and 10. I think they're going to try and get to Marino ring his bell today, Dick. And he hasn't soiled his uniform much this year. Oh, he hasn't done it yet today, either. A little draw play to the rookie Carter from Alabama, and he's inside the 40-yard line, a pickup of eight. From Miami's Orange Bowl, let's go to New York for this report. All right, Dick, for those who didn't see it earlier, the Bengals got a touchdown with a second to play in regulation to tie the Browns. Then they win it on this 36-yarder in the extra session by Jim Breach. Meanwhile, in Houston, the Steelers and Oilers are going to overtime. If Pittsburgh loses, their lead on the Bengals will be just one game. Dick? So things still very tight in that central division of the AFC. The Bengals with two games to go. Should Pittsburgh be upset by Houston, would be just a game behind. The Steelers 7-7. Seven seven. Dallas maintains its position in the three-way fight in the AFC East with a 26-10 win at Philadelphia. Third and two, out of the shotgun on third and two, and wide open is Duper. And Duper has a first down at the 28. Dolphins wasting no time and challenging the corners of the Raiders. First on Hayes, Haynes side, and now Mike back on Lester Hayes on the far side. 
look how much room Lester is giving the speedster. That's a 4-3 sprinter. And Lester, uh, who has excellent speed himself, respecting that, gave him too much room on that play. 11 yards on that first down play. Bruce Hardy, the tight end in motion. Under some pressure, but there it is again in the hands of Clayton. So Duper and Clayton and Marino is on his mark. When you talk to the Raiders, the comparison they make for this Miami offense is, offense is to the San Diego offense. Timing pattern. That's exactly what this is. A ball thrown to a spot on the field. And in that particular situation, Clayton arriving exactly at the time that the ball arrived. A pinpoint pass by Marino. One of the great strengths of Marino is his accuracy. He really knows how to put that ball on a pinpoint target. There are the two marks, Clayton and Duper. 110 catches this year coming into this game. They're averaging almost 19 yards every time they catch the ball. It's another first down. plays from the sideline. He may well put in his elephant backfield. I believe that's what he's going to do. The elephant backfield. Big Pete Johnson and Woody Bennett. And that's about 500 pounds of running back coming at you. Shula told us so, just as it was last week, Monday night against uh, the New York Jets. In this situation, first and goal outside the five. He doesn't mind passing on first down. Remember, Marino is going for an NFL record 37 touchdown passes this year. And he's going to throw. He's got his man. Incomplete. He went to the tight end, Dan Johnson. Johnson had a chance at that football. That ball had to be thrown perfectly right over the head of, of uh, 36 Davis. And if Marino got it there, but Johnson couldn't control it. Johnson made a tough catch for a touchdown against the Jets on Monday night. Marino on the drive is three for six, 44 yards. This is the 10th play. No score, just under nine minutes remaining first quarter. Tony Nathan right across up the Raiders with the run, and he's down at the three-yard line. McElroy coming up to assist on the tackle of Lester Hayes. Third and goal, and here come the extra wide receivers, Clayton and Nat Moore sent in by Don Shula. We may end up with four wides on this play, Dick. Of course, the Raiders will send in their specialists for the pass rush. Shula does a great job of mixing his plays. He really is a master strategist. He loves to use the different tools available to him, and these Dolphins will put a... Yeah, stretch the field on you in many different ways. Yeah, there's a problem here, and Nat Moore wants to call time, and Dan Marino does. So, as soon as Tony Nathan went to Marino after they broke huddle and had a problem, wisely, Moore, the veteran out there, said, hey, let's call time and not mess up this third and goal at the three-yard line. Let's go back, Merlin, to, to the matchup, and it really is a most exciting, intriguing one. The two speedsters, the youngsters, Duper and Clayton, against those veteran cornerbacks, Hayes and Haynes. Everyone says that's the best pair of cornerbacks in the NFL. They like to cover man-to-man. -man. Not many do anymore, so many zones, and yet they try to stop Duper and Clayton so far unsuccessfully. It's really going to put pressure on this Raider defense if they cannot control those two outside receivers man-to-man. -man. Their whole defensive strategy is based on the ability of those two men to cover by themselves. Now, if they can't do that, I talked to Willie Brown. I said to their, one of their defensive backfield coaches, I said, what happened? If Clayton and Duper can't be covered by one man, he said, we've got a real problem. And there they are, Clayton from Louisville, a second-year man. Duper from Northwest Louisiana State in his third year. He was a world-class sprinter. And there's the veterans, Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes on the corners. Help, of course, the Raiders to their domination in the playoffs last year on their way to the Super Bowl championship. Now here's what's at stake today for Miami. They've already clinched as double stars there, the AFC East, but they're looking for wins that will assure them home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Denver and Seattle are tied for the lead in the AFC West, so the Raiders cannot win the AFC West. They want the wild card, and they got some help today from the St. Louis Cardinals who beat New England. 
So the Raiders with even a loss today will still be a game ahead of New England with two to go. A win today would all but assure them the wild card spot. It'll be three teams from the AFC West. That is what appears to be what's going to develop. All right, third and goal at the three. Marino. Intercepted. This could be a touchdown for Mike Hayes. Hayes at the 50, and he's going to go all the way. 96 yards. Well, Marino took him down the field, but the pass for the touchdown went to the Raiders. Oh, my. thing that Dan Marino has not done during this year is, is to throw the bad passes, to throw the interceptions. It looked like he came late on that pass and looked away from the receiver briefly, came back and fired before he knew where the receiver was. A chance for you to see it at home and it looked to me like a late adjustment by the receiver and I believe Mar Marino threw as he turned back to the inside. It was Duper that he wanted, number 85. But it was number 22, Mike Haynes, that he got. There was a little pressure on Marino, and in that drive, despite the fact that Marino threw the ball well, the Raiders did have pressure on him. Chris Barr adds the extra point, and the Raiders lead 7 to nothing on a dramatic early touchdown by Mike Haynes, 96 yards. It appeared that Reno didn't even see the defensive back until he was showing his numbers going the other way. That's Marino reacting to the play. He chased for a while, realized there was no way he could catch. Started with a bad snap, Dick. That may have gotten Marino off on the wrong foot. And it looked like Duper, feeling that Marino was not going to throw the ball on time, was making an adjustment. Mike Hayes, just reading the quarterback beautifully on that play, picked it up and showing you excellent speed all the way through. I think what had happened, it was a quick pass play, a timing play. The bad snap here made it impossible for Marino to get up and get that ball off quickly. It looked like there was a black jersey coming fast, too. So there's the veteran Haynes acquired last year by the Raiders from the New England Patriots. His 32nd career interception is also his second career touchdown. Boy, that really took some steam out of this huge crowd at the Orange Bowl. That's something you want to do. This crowd is a very noisy and a very partisan crowd, and they really can play a role in a ball game. I hope from playing some games here. Chris Barr to kick it to Fulton Walker. Walker ever dangerous. As he Short shows kick. the world in the Super Bowl. Walker at the 10th. And he toppled at the 28-yard line. By the way, just to complete the business on Mike Haynes' interception for a touchdown, that is an all-time Raider record, breaking that of Fred Williamson's 91-yard interception return against San Diego 22 years ago. A final Kansas City has upset Denver 16-13. to Wow. So that pushes Seattle for the moment into first place alone in the AFC West. So gassing up, fueling up is Mike Haynes. And Ted Watts has replaced him on the corner. It is very hot and humid, 80 degrees plus. We welcome those of you who have just seen Kansas City in a dramatic victory over Denver and upset 16 to 13. Here is the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Raiders on a pass interception touchdown lead the Dolphins 7 0. Marino finds his man open. Clayton on the far side, and it's close to a first down. A 97-yard return for a touchdown by cornerback Mike Haynes, a Raider all-time record, giving Los Angeles the early lead 7 0. We're at the midpoint of the first quarter. Dick, you made a comment I'd like to follow up on. These teams, I think both of them glad, especially the Raiders, that this game was not played at 1 o'clock today. The temperature then probably at least 10 degrees hotter, and that sun bearing down. It's hot enough and very humid on the field at this moment, but with the sun dropping, at least taking some of the heat out of it, these players will not be affected that much. Especially in those black uniforms oh, the Raiders yeah. like to wear. Final, the 49ers make it 13-1 and with a victory at Atlanta. That's the first time Bill Walsh has won down there in Georgia. Very close to a first down. They're going to have second and short. Ben Dreis, the referee, will bring it in on second and inches. Raiders very happy to have number 55, Matt Millen, back in the center of that defense. They have missed him. Without him in there, they, they lose some of that strength against the running game. 
no one a veritable tank in there and a good leader too he he's still concerned about the strength of his uh, of his muscles in the groin and stomach area we welcome to the Orange Bowl. Those of you who have seen Buffalo defeat Indianapolis 21-15, the second victory of the year for the Bills here at 7-0 Raiders on a 97-yard interception return for a touchdown by cornerback Mike Haynes of the Raiders. Marino has second and inches at the 38. We're midway through the first quarter. Under pressure, but he finds Cooper. characteristic of the Raider defense. They backed off. Look how far Lester Hayes has backed off Duper, and they just throw the quick slant pattern right there. I think probably an audible on that play. Duper using his speed to go all the way to the outside. Jack Squarek fooled badly on the play. I don't think he's hurt on that play. I think he's just going for the safe route out of bounds, Dick. 28 yards on the play, as you see. Marino hook up with Duper again and Howie Long trying to put some pressure on the Miami quarterback. He said earlier, been sacked only seven times all year. By far the best protected quarterback in the NFL. Part of that is his own arm quickness. And he's going for Clayton. And Haynes just did get a hand in the way. There's the man who has the touchdown today, 97 yards. And he showed his tremendous athletic talent to get himself in position to block that one away from a possible Miami touchdown. Here's how the Raiders scored earlier. we were going to show you how uh, we're going to have a replay of their touchdown. Apparently not. 6.51 remaining in the first period. I think one of the things I would be concerned about if I were a member of the Raiders staff, if I were on their sideline, when you get a big break like that early in the game, sometimes if you're an emotional team, it takes a little of that pent-up emotion out of you. It's almost too easy. That's one thing they can't afford to have happen in this ball game. Better than that more emotion. Rookie Joe Carter. into the grasp of Squirek and Tony Caldwell, 58 and 57. Brad Van Pelt, 91 in on the stop. 7-0 Raiders here in Miami. Let's go to New York. Dick, you'll recall that a week ago against Seattle on the last play of the game, Rich Carlos hit the right upright in an attempt to tie. In Kansas City, five seconds to go, he hits the left upright from 42 yards away. Kansas City rallies from a 10-0 deficit, beats Denver, 16-13. The lonely road of the field goal kicker. Of course, we saw Carlos in one of his highs when he beat these Raiders in the Los Angeles Coliseum in overtime with a field goal. Marino on third and eight. It's Mark Clayton at the 26-yard line. Just shy of the 25. I don't think he has the first down, and the fans are unhappy with the spot. It's awfully tough for a cornerback to line up on a speedster like Duper and have to run backwards. Look at him. He's got to turn and move with a with a 4-3 sprinter right here and stay with him. Just shadow him all the way. You see the problem. Look at the quickness. Now, Mike Haynes is a fast, fast man, but the quickness of Duper, almost amazing there. Looks Fourth and in inches. Looks as if Miami's going to gamble. They're not going for the field goal. Trailing 7-0. The ball just outside the 25-yard line. Less than a foot for a first down. Well, I've got... Three tight ends in there, Plus and the, the bull elephant back. back. Boy, they got some size. Bennett at 225, and Pete Johnson at 250. It's Johnson. And his power got him the first down. They had him stopped short, but Rod Martin was giving away about 40 pounds, and Johnson just bowled ahead for the first down. Bruce Hardy coming in motion from his wing position to trap block on the inside, but it's just the brute force right there, one-on-one -on, -one on Martin, who could not slow down big Pete Johnson. Pete, not nearly as big as he used to be, has dropped a lot of weight under Shula here, down to about 248 pounds, and that is down. He was close to 270, in fact, at 270 when he was in San Diego. And yeah, they were taking him down to the grain market to weigh him. Trailing 7-0 at the Raider 24. Lyle Alzado wraps up Joe Carter. No gain as the veteran Alzado certainly read that play perfectly. Good penetration. Alzado slanting to the inside in very quickly. 
Carter is an explosive player. We understand that uh, Houston and Pittsburgh in overtime, and they're getting set now for a possible winning field goal try. And as soon as that develops, we're going to switch you live to the Astrodome in Houston. 441 remaining in the first quarter here. Dan Marino, a loss of a yard on that last play, second and 11. Marino, under pressure, gets away from Long. Looking deep. And he's got his man at the 15-yard line. Nat Moore came back, the veteran. It'll be just short of a first down. Marino does not like to run with the football. He's been well-schooled not to do that. He has to run here. Howie Long, right there, coming hard. Marino eludes him, gets to the outside, feels the pressure from Pickell, number 71, coming at him. But he has a receiver who knows how to come back against the grain, knows his quarterback is in trouble. Look how Matt Moore comes back to the ball here. Starts the man away and then comes back to the football to make the catch. That's smart football. Oh, and that's beautiful television. I guess that's why a lot of folks <laughs> miss that instant replay when they go to the stadium. We saw both quarterback and receiver that play develop. Just inches for a first down. Marino shooting for the record. Woody Bennett out of bounds at about the six-yard line. So this is where Marino and the Dolphins were before. First and goal at the Raiders' six, and on second down, he threw the interception, and Haynes dropped 97 yards for the Raider touchdown. Same situation. Interesting, Dick. All through the early part of the season, Shula's troops had scored first, had drawn first blood. This is the fourth week in a row that their opponents have scored first, but Marino has proved one thing conclusively here. The Raider defense hasn't slowed them down much. They can move the football both on the air and over the ground. Final score, Green Bay defeats Tampa Bay 27-14. And Houston has defeated Pittsburgh in overtime, so Cincinnati's only a game back in the Central Division. First and goal at the six. Pete Johnson for a couple. Lyle Elzado, saw Van McElroy as they unpile. Again, for those of you who have joined us after watching the first half of our NBC doubleheader, it's, uh, I guess, well known to everyone that uh, Marino is going for the all-time record, 37 touchdown passes. Right now, let's see how Houston beat Pittsburgh. Let's go to New York. All right, Dick, here's how it happened. In overtime, Joe Cooper from 30 yards. So Pittsburgh loses in OT. Cincinnati wins in overtime with two games left to play on the year. Pittsburgh's lead over the Bengals is down to one. And if they should tie, the tiebreakers favor Cincinnati. Second and goal for Miami. At the four, Marino. Incomplete. And Lester Hayes and Matt Moore were in a little pushing match in that corner of the end zone. No flag. Lester locked up, and Nat doesn't want to talk on that one. Lester's saying, hey, i got to win some of these battles over there. Lester, in terms of looking at the technique of these two cornerbacks, you talked to Duper and to Clayton about the, the matchup, and one of the things they said, you, you never know what Lester is going to do on that side. You always know what Mike's going to do. And we welcome those of you who have seen the overtime scrap between the Oilers and Steelers and Houston putting things together under Hugh Campbell, defeating Pittsburgh 23-20, cutting the Steelers' lead in the Central Division to just one game. Here at 7-0 Raiders, this is the third and goal from the four-yard line. Marino looking for the record, and it is there. There it is, 37 touchdown passes for Dan. point by Von Schaumann to even the game. It's 7-7. Timeout. 
2.41 left in the first quarter. A quarter dominated by Miami, but a pass interception for a touchdown has it even. Heavy Through their 36 touchdowns in a 14-game season, Marino has 37. Dick, the words his teammates use to describe him, accurate, decisive, confident. He can throw from any position, and he showed some of his leadership coming back from a mistake. Didn't miss a beat. Brought him back down the field and threw the touchdown after throwing the touchdown the interception the other direction. Now the Raiders will get the football as Von Schaumann kicks it toward Montgomery and Williams. Good kick with a wind at his back, and Williams will not run it out. The key to this play, as you another bad snap, by the way. Stevenson not getting the ball back. Look how Marino avoids the rush here and then has time to spot his receiver. Cephalo had broken away on that side from Otis, Otis, McKinney. Otis McKinney. Good job by Cephalo of getting himself open. And, of course, Marino finding the open man. Marino had thrown touchdown passes to nine different receivers this year. Cephalo didn't have one, but he gets the record today. He gets the most important one for for the year, at least for the record books, anyway. Raiders in the 7-7 tie. They've had the ball only three plays in this quarter, and there goes Marcus Allen. Out to the 29-yard line. Dave Casper, number 87, is in. They're using that two tight end formation, Dick. Nearly a first down from Miami to New York. Dick, earlier today on the pregame show, Pete Axthelm picked the Jets over the Giants, but the mayor of New York disagreed. You are wrong. It's the Giants by 10 points. <laughs> and the final, the Giants 20, the Jets 10. Way to go, Your Honor. Let's go back. All right, where Frank Hawkins has a first down. I understand that Pete Actown was uh, seen scurrying out of the studio to get Mayor Koch's phone number. He wants to get ready for next week's pick. <laughs> I wonder how many of his hats he had in his pocket. So. That's right. Well, Mayor Koch did not have his hat off to Pete Axel, apparently. Well, the Dolphins dominating the first quarter, but the pass interception for touchdown by Haynes of 97 yards, making it a 7-all tie. A minute 35 left in this first quarter, and that is the first first down for the Raiders. Casper, the second tight end in motion. Wilson looking long, and there's Barnwell incomplete. Knocked away from the football by Judson, 49 and 42, Lyle Blackwood. Of course, those of you who follow these Raiders know about Wilson's thumb problem. Suffered a sprained thumb, badly sprained thumb on the Chicago game. Had to go back into that game when David Hum was knocked out, knocked unconscious and injured. He had to play with that injured thumb for a number of weeks, and he could not grip the football. Told me yesterday that thumb is back to strength now. He can throw, and it wouldn't uh, surprise me to see him maybe try and get deep here. The Raiders love to throw the deep ball. Goes deep and Williams is open. 35 30. And Doki Williams out of bounds at the Miami 19 yard line. Lyle Blackwood, the veteran from TCU, knocking him out of bounds. A 47 yard play. Doki Williams. We're going to see more and more of him on the Raider lineup. They like his speed. Look how they're trying to keep him on the line of scrimmage. That's blank for 44, but Doki just blazed away, and that's the same kind of pattern that we see Duper and Clayton running. Wilson put that ball right perfectly on target. He throws a very soft pass, puts the high trajectory on the ball, and kind of lofts it in and just lays it out in front of the receiver. It's a very easy pass to catch. Now Williams is the young answer to the Clayton-Duper combination. He was a UCLA track star. First down at the 19. Marcus Allen, short yardage on that left side. Allen, who starts today with 14 touchdowns to lead the National Football League in that regard. And in second place are Mark Clayton and Pete Johnson, each with a dozen. Allen, overall, the top ground gainer rushing and receiving in the American Conference. Very high in praise of Marcus, the Heisman Award winner with Don Shula. We chatted with him yesterday. Allen in motion. Wilson. Oh, almost intercepted. He threw it right into the chest of Lyle Blackwood, but Blackwood had his eyes on the receiver, not on the ball. <laughs> Noah's knocked off his shoulder pad. Blackwood just really preparing to time the hit, expecting to have to strip that ball away. 
ball a little erratic actually bounced right off his chest he's he's been suffering from a a calf problem and i'm talking to the to the miami coaches they said he's so tough you've got to shoot him to get him off the field <laughs> he's double tough <laughs> he and his brother glenn the bruise brothers two extra defensive backs in for miami on third and eight oops well we got two people in motion penalty Wilson throws to Barnwell. He fumbles, and it's Miami's ball. They'll carry it out. William Judson to the 28-yard line, and they'll decline the penalty. <laughs> it looked like Marcus Allen made a mistake. You can only have one man in motion. Marcus either blew the count or blew the play. He started out in motion. The flag went down instantly. Marcus tried to stop so that he would be in a set position, although out of position. Motion, offense, number 80 and 82. Decline the penalty, first down. Well, Barnwell fumble popped right into the arms of Judson, and Miami stops the Raider drive. 17 seconds left in the quarter. It's tied at seven. sideline as fast as I could. Earlier we were on the field and uh, it just really is hot down there. Marcus Allen on that last play, watch him here. He knew he'd made a mistake. He looked to the outside and tried to stop. No chance for him. Now here's the shot right here. Lyle Blackwood stripping that ball away, just pulling Barnwell's arms apart. And what appeared to be a scoring position suddenly turns into a turnover. Dan Marino goes to work. He's moved the ball very effectively against the Raider defense. Joe Carter hemmed in. Reggie Kinlaw back in the lineup for the Raiders. And they're getting healthy at the right time. They had lost Millen and Kinlaw out of the middle of that uh, defense. They're both back now and starting today. Uh, Jim Plunkett is healthy. He threw the ball extremely well in practice yesterday, we thought. And the thumb injury suffered by starter Mark Wilson is finally healed. But it's Dan Marino's day thus far. Two touchdowns, one on an interception to Haynes, 97 yards, and then he sets the record as he hits Jimmy Cephalo. Two hands against Miami. Look at the Raiders, 13-3-1 against Shula and the Dolphins, and they've won four in a row and actually have a lead here in the Orange Bowl, 4-3-1. No other team can make that claim. It's seven all as we open the second quarter. Tom Flores, is the only coach that she was not beaten head to head. Only Woody Bennett behind Marino. Second and nine. Duper drops the ball. He had Lester Hayes beaten cleanly and dropped the ball in the open. That's one of the few times we've uh, seen those little speedsters not hang on to one that should have been caught. We have quite a few Smurfs on the field today, if you want to use that terminology. Almost all of the starting receivers, in fact, all the starting receivers, relatively small in stature, Dick. Dwight Stevenson from Alabama in his fifth year. A college teammate of Don McNeil, the cornerback with the Dolphins. A superb run blocker. We're going to keep our eyes on him. He makes it mighty tough on that nose guard, and this, uh, the 4 3 defense really takes care of the linebacker. And part of the team that has protected the quarterback so well here in Miami. Third and nine. Hit immediately at the 35 short of the first down is Nat Moore as Mike Davis barreling into the receiver of the Dolphins and Reggie Roby will come in for his first punt of the day and Roby had a terrific game Monday night average 51 yards I think four or five kicks he's a two-step punter and he is the biggest of the NFL kickers he weighs almost 240 pounds he just overpowers it and watching him yesterday very difficult to read the flight of the ball one time it'll go right next time left next time it'll die next time it sails over your head and Clee Montgomery has replaced Greg Pruitt at the other end he's at the 20 That one with the roll is out of the end zone. That's over 80 yards into the wind. Reggie Roby. 65 yards, 45 yards on the net for Roby as the Raiders will take over at their 20-yard line. Let's just check the height of that punt. 
Roby has such a powerful leg. He simply overpowers that football, and we lose the height of the ball, but it's way up, literally, above the top rungs of the stadium here, finally dropping out of the sky and pounding its way through the end zone. I think Montgomery was glad that one rolled into the end zone. Next Sunday, more great football on NBC. And although a sixth round draft pick of the Dolphins is proving that he's right there with the very best in the NFL. Detroit early lead 10 7 against Seattle. That's out at the Kingdom. Rams blowing out early 21 0 against New Orleans. Wonder what kind of day Eric Dickerson is having as he goes after OJ's single season mark. Wilson on first down has a man open. Christensen, but misses him out at the 50 yard line. Todd Christensen, who has 60 five catches this year after leading the NFL last year with 92. The Raiders again employing the two tight end offense and they've been successful running the football with that offense over the past few weeks. They spent a lot of time early in this week adding a number of pass plays to that particular formation and that set. And then midweek Casper came in with a cold hamstring. They thought they were going to have to jump the whole offense but it appears but they have decided to go with it. He's on the field right now. In fact, that's him coming in motion. They go to Marcus Allen running the other way. Cuts back. And is down at the 25-yard line after a five-yard gain. You see how why Marcus at times is guilty of the fumble as he made the cut back as part of his balance. He had that ball way out to his side. But uh, what a productive player he has been since graduating from Southern California. These Los Angeles Raiders use fewer substitutions offensively, I think, than any football team in the NFL. One of the reasons they can do that is because of the flexibility and the versatility of number 32, Marcus Allen. You get the feeling that Allen might be the target on a little short pass in this situation. Frank Hawkins behind Wilson on second and five. Wilson down the middle. Great catch by Christensen, who had to go high to spear that one. First down. Mark Wilson knocked down very abruptly on that play. The flag is down, Merlin. It may be holding against the Raiders. And they're walking way back in the other direction. It's going to negate that fine first down throw. Number 79. 79, Bruce Davis. Well, we're saying in terms of the yellow flag, the Dolphins, the least penalized team in football the last decade plus, and again, lowest number of penalties this year, and the Raiders are in a fight with the Lions for most penalties in the NFL this season. Left side of your screen, number 79, Bruce Davis, right there, locked up. Charlie Bowser, number 56, the man rushing, a linebacker that often goes into a three-point stance. In fact, he's down again. That's the situation. Third and long for Wilson. And intercepted by Judson. 20, 10. Marcus Allen makes the tackle at the six-yard line. And you get the feeling we may, we may see Jim Plunkett before this day is through. Tremendous pressure. Dolphins able to get people free and into Mark Wilson's face. Wilson with that kind of pressure, and you sense right here, he sees the white shirts coming at him, fired that football and just overthrew, overthrew his intended receiver right here, over the head of Barnwell and right into the arms of William Judson. Judson flying up the sideline, gets it almost to the five before he's driven out of bounds. Yeah, that was a gimme. Pretty good tackle by Marcus Allen. First and goal for the Dolphins as they attempt to capitalize on the Wilson interception. Six-yard line. Marino looking for number 38. Dan Johnson. That's the second that's been off his fingertips in the end zone. Raiders coming with everything they have trying to shake up Marino. Getting that ball on target, it, it is a tough catch, though, when you have to turn your body all the way around, Dick. And he gunned it. Well, he had to get it out of there. Well, isolation shot right there. Johnson is going to work on the strong safety, Mike Davis. You see Davis trying to get back into the action. And you see why he couldn't catch that ball. He had to turn his body literally uh, more than 180 degrees and then could not handle it. 
second and goal from the six. It's tied at seven. 13 minutes left in the first half. touchdown rushing. Usually it goes to Pete Johnson down close. Miami Dolphins give their fans another reason to celebrate here. Nathan just showing you explosive quickness here. Found a small opening and looked like he was looked like a ping pong ball being knocked up into the air. He was literally almost knocked into the end zone on that play. Took him nine seconds after the pass interception by Judson and Von Chaman trying to give him a seven point lead. Crossbar. He hit nope. the crossbar. Was it blocked? I believe it was blocked. Good penetration by the Raiders. 99. Sean Jones from Northeastern of Boston able to fly swat that. Let's see it from. Uh, I think we got an end zone camera down there, don't we? Yeah, You'll right from the crossbar. number 99, right here. Sean Jones, six foot seven. Watch him go up. The big hand right in the center of your screen. Blocked it. Knocked it away. Got that full reach and extension at the perfect second. And how often do those missed extra points come to bear later in the game? It starts with a subtle glance. Ram Tough Trucks and revolutionary new cars. Dodge and American Revolution. By Atra from Gillette, the essence of shaving. And by NCR, who bring you a better personal computer. Kenberg and Merlin Olsen at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Dolphins looking for their 13th win against a single loss. Lead in 13 to 7. Each team has turned an interception into a touchdown. Von Schaman kicking toward Clee Montgomery at the 6. 25, 30, 40. And Montgomery is all the way to the 48-yard line. So the younger brother of the Eagles, Wilbert, with an excellent kickoff return. Finally tackled by Robert Sowell. One of the things that's interesting about watching Dan Marino, when he gets in behind the center, he waggles. He never stays still in there. Watch him moving his hips, bouncing around. You also will see right here the explosive quickness that we mentioned, Tony Nathan. And right there, just throwing his body into the air and finally into the end zone. Good teams take advantage of their opportunity. They make you pay for mistakes. That's exactly what Miami's done here. Mark Wilson still at quarterback, and Marcus Allen showing his shiftiness as he dances down to the Miami 45, and a flag is down. Motion against the Raiders. So that'll nullify a good first down carry by Marcus Allen. Well, you saw the penalty statistics early. Illegal motion. And certainly, so far in this game, the penalties have really hurt the Los Angeles Raiders. You don't want to kill your own drives. You don't want to take away your big plays offensively. And a number of big plays have come back to the line and been marched off as penalties instead of giving these Raiders an opportunity to move the ball down the field. Instead of the seven-yard gain, a five-yard penalty loss, and it's first and 15 from the Raider 43. protection. Wide open Barnwell, but again, and I don't think that thumb is 100%. The Raiders are saying, and Wilson has said he's completely healed, but he's not throwing the ball that accurately, nor is he throwing it with any zip. You have to wonder, too, what happened to Mark's confidence in those games that he had to play with that bad thumb. I've got to believe it was awfully hard on him to react as he has been trained to react and to watch that ball just kind of flip out of his hand and, and soar through the air and into the hands of the opponents or out of bounds. You've got to wonder what it did to him emotionally and his confidence level. Barnwell was wide open, but he threw it too wide. Look at the time he had. Barnwell this time is he inbounds? Yes, first down at the Miami 39. And Malcolm Barnwell from Virginia Union, he has developed into one of the better kept secrets of the NFL. He's over 40 on the year, and he, that was an excellent move. And when the Raiders want to go deep and they talk about their vertical game, this is the man they go to more and more often. Look how he just stretched every inch he could get to keep those toes in bounds. 
almost a ballet-like move on that sideline. 39-yard line, only the third first down for the Raiders in this game. 13 to 7 Miami, 12 minutes, 17 seconds left in the half. Marcus Allen, 35-30. Look at that move down to the 25-yard line, and Blackwood got just enough of Marcus Allen to trip him up after a 15-yard gain. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. In sports, Cincinnati style, WLWT Channel 5. In the heat of the Orange Bowl, Miami, Florida, the Dolphins leading the Raiders 13 to 7. Marcus Allen will show you why he's such a great back on this particular play. He'll just turn it loose here and good back make you miss. Watch what he does to Blackwood here. Change of direction, literally leaping almost over the defensive back. Allen gets the call on first down for short yardage off the right side down to about the Dolphin 22 yard line. Baumhauer playing on that injured ankle, number 73, along with A.J. Douay, after Bo Camper had gotten the first piece of Marcus Allen. We mentioned in the early part of the show, Dick, that these Dolphins have been susceptible to the run. 28th in the league against the rushing average. That's average per rush, but not many teams have been able to run the ball against them. When you fall behind, and the Dolphin offense has been so explosive that people have had to give up on the run and go to the passing game. Looks as if the Rams are running it, running up the score at least. 24-0 against New Orleans. Wide open is Allen. And Lyle Blackwood finally corrals him at the 11-yard line. First down Raiders, 10 yards to Allen. Todd Christensen alone by himself in the end zone. But Allen was the man they wanted underneath. And that's, that's such a tough play on a defense. If you can get the ball to a great running back like Allen in the secondary where he must only then deal with the secondary he can raise havoc for you Dave Casper joins Christensen the two tight ends to the right with Casper as the wing first down Allen again oh what a change of direction touchdown And talk about the ability of quarterbacks to see the field, to read the receivers, to know who is open and who is covered. Great running backs also have to have that kind of vision. Marcus Allen starts a play to the left and breaks all the way back against the grain. Excellent blocking, but mostly it was Allen's ability to see that opening develop and then the quickness to take advantage of it that allowed him to get into the end zone. All right, the try for points for the lead, and Chris Barr nails it through, and the Raiders lead for the second time, 14 to 13. So Marcus Allen aided by an excellent block from Henry Lawrence, and the Raiders lead by one. Dodge announces the toughest truck warranty in America. Five years. And as a kid went to see the Browns in the heyday of Paul Brown and later was drafted by the Browns out of John Carroll University. Don Shula, certainly one of the coaching elite. 14-13 Raiders and a tremendous kick by Barr. Fulton Walker watches the spin eight yards deep in the end zone. First down, Miami at the 20-yard line. 14-13. After the Raiders took a 7-0 lead on a 97-yard touchdown interception by Mike Haynes, Marino to Cephalo, the record-setting 37th touchdown pass of the season for Marino to tie it at 7-all. Then a Judson interception to the Raiders' six. Nathan scored from six yards out to make it 13-7. Sean Jones blocked the extra point, and that meant that Marcus Allen's touchdown with Barr's point gives the Raiders the lead. Chuck Yeager for AC Delco. This flight doesn't get scrubbed for bad weather. Next year with the Raiders, Howie Long from Villanova. He has eight and a half sacks this year, second to Rod Martin. He led the team with 13 sacks last year. He's getting double and triple team blocking on him all season long. Play inside a tackle right now. Four man line. Marino rolling out in the flag down. Away from Mark Clayton out of bounds. Ball was not catchable. Let's check the penalty. Quite possibly a holding call. They tried to slow down Howie, Howie Long from that tackle position. I think 
the Raiders have decided defensively that they're going to have to go to the four-man line, even on first down, to get a squeeze on Marino, put some pressure on him. Howie doing a good job of rushing on that last play, working on Roy Foster, number 61. Here's a play right here. You'll get a chance to see number 75 in action, and he is so quick. He really is an outstanding defensive lineman. Plays the run well as well as the pass. Getting around, oh, that's Stevenson. He moved inside, got away from Stevenson, and that's no easy task. Broke clean, putting the pressure onto the backside. One word compliment, and you hear it from the men who try to block Long as well as the teammates of Long, relentless. He just gives you 60 minutes tough all the time. Now they've got to a three-man line, shifting it up. First down, 20 from the Miami 10-yard line. Picks up about four. Tried to trap and break him loose against that four-man line, but Jack Squirek, who broke his jaw against the Dolphins in the preseason, made the hit on that play. The man who broke his jaw, Fernando Burgess, now uh, playing for the uh, Jets. Let's go inside and look at Howie Long. We saw Howie make a good play a moment ago. This particular play, he's trying to get back inside him. <laughs> he could not make it, but boy, he stuffed some bodies in there, too. Pretty he is very physical. Ed very Newman physical. was the man he knocked down. So number 64, the right guard for Miami. Over the middle of Dan Johnson, and he's out to the 25. Five yards short of a first down. Squirek again on the tackle. That's the kind of play that will remind a lot of people of the San Diego Chargers and Dan Fout. Marino able to throw those kinds of patterns, and they're doing more and more of that. Tight ends very big in last week's victories for both these teams. Three tight end touchdowns last week, two for Hardy and one for Johnson, and they were on that kind of quick opening play. Third down and five. Duper right, Clayton, and Matt Moore to the left. Hardy the tight end on the right side. Out of the shotgun, Marino with Nathan at his side. ability to turn and get in the way of Clayton and knock another way. He's done that twice, plus the interception for a touchdown. Great battle going on. Set it up for you on our pregame show. The matchup speed on speed. This ball underthrown. Look at Hayes go all the way back around, literally pirouette to put his fingers on that football. Had that ball stayed in the air just a moment longer, the receiver might have gotten back to it, Dick. Ten-man rush now, or at least they have ten men on the line of scrimmage. Montgomery back at the 32. Roby. This is one of those dying spirals. Montgomery at the 30. Ran into his own man. Oh, that's a ambitious return by Clee Montgomery. He's to the 37-yard line. A seven-yard return of a 45-yard punt. Timeout with 8.08 remaining first half. began with Dodge Caravan and Dodge Daytona. Each knee, pretend this is a knee rather than an elbow. It works to protect the knee. George Anderson, the trainer for the, uh, for the Raiders, developed this brace to show you how effective it is. Here are two braces. This, of course, is the way it should look. This one was worn by Matt Millen, the San Diego game, came off the field, and look, oh, look how it was bent. Saved his knee. He said it saved him from surgery. Marino wearing one of those on each of his legs. You see the bulk on the outside of the knee. That's to protect those very valuable knees on that quarterback. Well, I think that ought to be required of all high school players. Well, there are a lot of them that require it today, especially if they're bigger players. Wilson going for the bomb to Barnwell. Ah, looked like a bump in there to me. Sure did. Paul Langford, 44, looks as if he got a little piece of Barnwell, but no argument from the Raider receiver. The man confrontations. Uh, Raiders say, let's uh, let's put some pressure on the uh, Dolphin defensive back. Look at that excellent speed. Here we thought the bump was right here. Both men moving. I believe. Well, maybe he's maybe the official decided that ball could not have been caught. And if that's the case, they do not throw the flag, but definitely contact between the receiver and the defender. On second and ten, Marcus Allen gets the call. Worms out to the 42. Gain of six. 
just to finish up that piece of business, Dick, uh, George Anderson, the trainer for the Raiders, the only member of the original Raider crew still there. 25 years he's been with the Raider organization. An excellent trainer, and I think with this brace has provided a very important tool to young athletes all across the country. What a contribution to the sport. Second and four. Runner pass. Going deep. And Barnwell with a little hesitation on the sidelines. I don't know if he went out of bounds or not. Apparently not. I don't see a hat down. And he uh, was working on Don McNeil. McNeil seeing his first action after being on the injured reserve list for a while. Actually not on the injured reserve. Injured but kept on the active roster. And Barnwell may have hurt himself uh, stretching out trying to get back to that football. McNeil an outstanding quarterback to returning to the lineup for Miami. In fact uh, many feel he is their finest defensive back when he's healthy. Looks like he may have tried to catch himself on his left arm and shoulder. May have injured himself in the process. Timeout, 7-18 left in the half. Oh, what Sylvania light bulbs go through before they come to you. Barnwell, here's a latest report on Rodell Thomas who has hit Hurt, uh, when he made a hit on the opening kickoff, he's been taken to a Miami hospital after x-raying his neck. Thomas was taken off on a stretcher. We'll advance to any news that we receive. Fulton Walker hit accidentally by James Davis, and that'll cost the Raiders some more yardage. A 43-yard punt by Guy, and James Davis ran into Walker. Hard to tell what was going through Davis's mind. He may have glanced up to check on the flight of that ball and may not have seen the fair catch signal. Wait a minute. There may not be a flight. They're going to re-huddle. We get a chance. I'd like to see the comparison of Guy, who is really the classic punter. You know, when they used to take the picture of the punters and you follow through and get that foot up above your head. And then Roby, who is such a different style. He's the, well, he hits it more like a linebacker. Roby is a power punter using the huge strength of that leg to get the ball away. Now well, there it is. <laughs> just, just like magic, Dick. But look at the extension of Ray Guy. And was locked into the catcher. No penalty. No penalty. Yeah. They're saying that uh, Davis, Mike Davis, or not James Davis. James Davis was bumped into the kicker, or bumped into the kick receiver, and not arriving there under his own power was therefore not to be penalized. If uh, we don't have a spectacular play, let's go back to those punters. There's something else that I'd like to see again. First, uh, Miami will begin just inside the 15 with the Raiders in front, 14 to 13. Marino to Tony Nathan. Grab by an arm and drag down to the tackle. Roby, unlike most every punter in the league, when he makes contact with a football, look at his left foot firmly planted. Now, Guy has the traditional plastic style. As contact is made, you're airborne. But Roby, with that two-step and 240 pounds, look at the size of his thighs, he just flattens the ball. Talking to Steve uh, Ortmeyer, the special teams uh, coach of the Raiders, he said, you know, we really won't even try and block his punt. You can't get there. He's, he's had one punt block. That was last year. But with those two quick steps and getting the ball off like he does, he said he doesn't give you any options. And the ball is up there forever, so you have to fair catch most of them. Yet he's second to Jim Arnold of Kansas City for the NFL League. Marino under some pressure. There's, oh, off the hands of Clayton. And another rare drop. And look at Lester Hayes. He's furious with the official downfield saying that he's pushing off on me. Lester wanted offensive interference against Clayton on that play. That's amazing that Clayton would drop this football. Let's see what Lester's angry about. Well, a little bit of a shoulder, not that much, but he certainly should have caught that football. I think maybe just too easy, had too much time. We talked earlier of what great hands Clayton and Duper have shown through the year, and it's been a tough half for Clayton. Lester doing a little play acting on that one, I think, Dick. A little thespian work. <laughs> the amazing Lester hit. Clayton to the right, Duper left, with those cornerbacks right up on the line of scrimmage. Look at uh, Hayes and Haynes. And a flag down. Was that the 32nd clock? Our motion against Miami. I think someone moved on the Miami line. All start offense number 61. Roy Foster, he may uh, try to get the jump on Howie Long. Standing 
blocker at USC for Marcus Allen. Now, one of the reasons that this Dolphin line has been so effective in, in uh, keeping Marino from being sacked is because they have such a good protection scheme. John Sandusky, offensive line coach, has got a scheme where everyone's involved. And they all take a tremendous amount of pride in protecting their quarterback. Not a bad snap. by James Davis, number 45, with an assist to Rod Martin, the all-pro linebacker of the Raiders, and here comes Roby DuPont. We'll be able to see this young man swing that big right leg again. And he's got plenty of field to work with. He is kicking into the wind. His last kick, not nearly as good as the one we saw earlier that literally went as high as the Orange Bowl top row. We're going to try to track the height of Roby's punt. Even when he doesn't hit it cleanly for the spiral, he just gets it up there so hot. Not too good a kill. No, he saw it. He was angry instantly. Now let's see how bad, quotation marks, that Roby kick was. I think it still was pretty close to 45 yards. It was 46. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad kick. 46 into the wind and considered a bad one. Here at the Orange Bowl where so much college and pro football history has been written. How about this moment? Was that really 15 years ago? Last year, wants to beat him on Sunday. And the Raiders, of course, looking for a win that would get them into the playoffs upcoming as a wild card team and a chance to defend that Super Bowl championship. Remember, Super Bowl 15, as a wild card, they won four games and beat the Eagles in New Orleans for the Super Bowl title. Wide open Christensen at the 50. Nobody near him. And he's to the Miami 41. And the two weaknesses of the Dolphin defense the last three weeks have been tight ends have been open, and they've not stopped the run as well as they'd like. 21 yards on the play. And Christensen, of course, a, a very wily receiver, just has a great sense about finding the openings. You saw that quick peek. He knew that there was a chance to get over and get open. Wilson did a good job of picking him up in the open and getting him the football and the first down on the 41-yard line. Just under five minutes left in the half, and the Raiders lead Miami 14-13. They pick up the blitz, and there's Christensen in the crowd with another first down at the 30-yard line. Brown and Bowser and Blackwood, three of the killer bees to make the stop after an 11-yard gain, but an injury to Henry Lawrence. Henry Lawrence on the ground, and the one thing you don't want to see if you're on that Raider sideline is another one of your offensive linemen down. They've had Don Mostbar. It started as a guard. He's out with surgery on his back. Shelby Jordan. Shelby Jordan has not had surgery, but may well have to have surgery on his knee. He will not be back during the year. Checking the stability of the knee joint. He's in the middle of your screen right there. And look at the look at the ground giving away. And we talked earlier about the fact that this turf is is not in very good shape. They played on it on several rainy days. In fact, that BC uh, Miami game was one that was uh, here just a couple of weeks ago, tore the turf up. Lawrence, one of those with consecutive day on NBC Sports. What a beautiful sight as you look out through the open end of this orange bowl into a darkening sky. First down at the Miami 30. Oops, Dave Casper wandering off the line of scrimmage and Frank Hawkins a couple of yards, but Casper with a noise here in the orange bowl Obviously missed the snap count. Casper at that wing formation, two tight ends, a full two steps before the count. I think he just blew the count, Vic. I think thought it was on one count and not on another, and you see him grabbing the hamstring. I don't know, maybe as much for a little sympathy from the sideline. <laughs> you, you hate to make that kind of mistake. Again, the Raiders hurt by their own mistakes. Well, what? They've refused the penalty. Penalty refused. They've taken the down. A couple of yards in the play. By the way, uh, you were right, uh, Merlin. Charlie Hanna has moved out from guard to right tackle, replacing Henry Lawrence. Hanna, 73, at right tackle. Marcus Allen, no hold. After a couple of yards, Mark Brown in his second year from Purdue, where he led the Boilermakers in the Big Ten in tackles his senior year and he is tough against the run chuck studley of course uh, new at the job of coordinating this miami defense Arn sparker there he is in the center of your screen uh, with the paper underneath his arm he's the man who calls the defenses for the killer bees 
Bill Arnsberger, his predecessor and Shula's uh, right-hand man for so many years now at LSU. And uh, got a little boost from Shula's son the other day, didn't he? Mike Shula quarterback in Alabama to the win over Auburn that sends LSU into the bowl. Third and six. Wilson going for six, and there's Barnwell. Just broken up at the last moment by Don McNeil. Oh, what a play by McNeil. He was beaten and hustled back to do what Mike Haynes has been doing to the Dolphin receiver. Henry Lawrence had returned to the line to give Wilson some protection on this play. Barnwell open in the end zone, blew by McNeil on that play, and McNeil making the reaction, as you said, that got back, got his hand on that football. When you talk about great defensive backs, you talk about their ability to close on the receivers. You saw it right there. Great ball reaction. Chris Barr will try a 44-yard field goal. And he has three more Raider points. Barr just easily swinging that leg through, had the wind at his back, and the Raiders build their lead to four. It's 17-13. Certainly one of the advantages that the Raiders have in this ballgame, the consistency of a Chris Barr. It's been a mighty tough year for Uva Von Schaman. Von Schaman uh, kicking less than 50% on his field goals and uh, missing on his extra points. Missed one in this ballgame, obviously, and that has been a big worry and a concern for Don Shula. Yeah, Barr's extra point, now the field goal, the difference in the game. There's Von Schaman who has not hit yet from beyond 37 yards. 9 to 12. Inside, 37 has been his longest of the year. He's missed everything. He's 0 for 8 outside the 37. In case you joined us late, Dallas and the Giants both have won to join Washington at 9 and 5 in the East. Pittsburgh lost today. Cincinnati won both in overtime, so the Bengals are only a game behind the Steelers with two to play. And now a very interesting central division of the AFC. You'll get all that information at halftime, NFL 84. Walker driven out of the end zone on that long kick by Barr. And with 3.19 left in the half, Dan Marino and the Miami offense takes the field. Barr has become one of the best kickoff men in the NFL. I think he and Norm Thompson out in Seattle, the two uh, who consistently put that ball into the end zone with great regularity benefiting here of course from a trailing breeze but he really rooted that football Marino who set an NFL season record with his 37th touchdown pass when he hit Jimmy Cephalo to tie the game in the first quarter at 7 all now looks at a deficit of four points it up at midfield intended for Duper. He wanted the interception. The flag is down in the backfield of the Dolphins. Personal Hold. war on the far side of the field. Duper and Mike Kane. That was a holding call against Miami. Here's a chance. Look how he crowds him at the line. Actually batting his helmet to try and break his timing and allowing him to go inside. They're changing up on the receivers. Ordinarily, the Raiders always force the wide receivers to the outside. On that play, you saw Mike Kane allowing the receiver to break inside. I think it came as a real shock. That one of those typical Southern Florida showers. Uh, nothing serious. There's a lot of blue sky all around in the waning minutes of this warm Sunday afternoon. First and 20 after the holding call. Joe Carter has joined Bennett in the backfield. This is Carter. and Rod Martin collaborate along with Howie Long. The Raiders have not lost their ability to use the verbs well. Alzado threatens to tear the lips off Marino, and Marino said, why my lips? <laughs> well, certainly one of the colorful teams in the NFL and one of the most outspoken men in the league, Lyle Alzado. Playing pretty well here today. Marino was clever on television. So I mean, he did that pucker, took his lips away, and as if he'd already had it happen. Why not some other part of my body? Look out. The Nathan. And he is 
gets to the 18-yard line. That'll be 12 yards short of a first down. Mike Keynes makes the tackle along with Martin. Raiders will miss the consistency of Bob Nelson, starting linebacker. Hey, that's no average mark. Excuse me, Merlin. 4,000 yards for a passer. That's only the sixth passer in NFL history to get 4,000 yards in a season. Dan Marino. The way he's the way he's marching people around and throwing the ball this year. There are the others. Rewrite the book, didn't they, Dick? About Dickie, Kenny, Seip, and Joe Namath, and now Dan Marino in the 4,000-yard club. And of course, it was Wyatt Tittle along with George Bland who held the season record of 36 touchdown passes. There's old 16, George Blanda, young 23-year-old Dan Marino, all alone in the books today. Walker of the Miami Dolphins caught that ball in Super Bowl 17. There were 98 yards and 11 Redskins between him and a touchdown, but he never looked back. Dolphins by four. It's third and 12 for Marino and company as the Dolphins break huddle at their own 18-yard line. We've had a number of short snaps from Stevenson on the shotgun. Let's see if he can get this one up comfortably into Marino's hand. He's got Long playing right over his nose, does Stevenson, the center. That's a better snap. like Moore actually bumping Davis at the same time. Let's see who he called it on. Well, no. The way he's marching out, I believe he's going to call it on the defensive man. Tom Flores pulling Willie Brown, his assistant coach, and a former defensive back away. That's a big break for the Dolphins on third and 12 to get the interference call in the first down. Pass interference, 45, and that's the first down. Well, and I believe that when we get a chance to see the end of that play, it's, it's one that uh, will not justify the call. James Davis, 45, called against him. 153 left in the half. We'll try and save that for you and show it to you later. Marino throwing off balance for Clayton. He was inbound. It's a good catch at the 25-yard line. I think the most amazing thing about Dan Marino is the fact that he can throw the ball virtually from any position, totally out of balance on that play, and yet he saw Clayton coming open and just gunned the football to him. Look, looked like he was throwing absolutely against his body. Watch him here. Marino totally out of balance as he throws this football, running, sees the receiver open, falling back. Look, he set both feet off the ground. Lester Hayes, the man that he beats, said, I've charted quarterbacks for eight years. I've never seen a level of confidence except maybe the great Dan Faust. And here's Marino, only at 23, and it took confidence to throw that one. Dan Johnson, he's to the 14-yard line. Mike Davis with a tackle. And they thought he got pushed. The Dolphins extremely lucky on that play. Tony Nathan actually started in motion and then stopped. I don't believe he was set for a full second. I think that's what Mike Davis is so angry about. The officials apparently thought that he had stopped for a second. I don't believe he had. Raining harder with 1.14 left and the clock running. Dolphins trying to take the lead before the intermission. Marino to Johnson again. By Brad Van Pelt, the former Giant, number 91, or that would have been a touchdown. Van Pelt, starter virtually since he arrived after the trade from Minnesota. He's one of the few men with fresh legs on the field, Dick. He literally has played only enough to, uh, to justify, you know, he, in the regular season, he'd just be coming out of camp. Look at the rain falling now. This has become more than just a shower. the six-yard line, second down, and call it three, make it two, second and two. Marino, gunning, Clayton almost made a one-handed stab of a wet football. He's, he's a little guy, but he has very large hands. We watched him yesterday catching balls just like that, where the point of the ball one-handed. That is the quickness. 
and the athletic ability that is so much admired by those who watch him perform. That ball, you notice that's not a pure spiral. That ball is kind of rotating in a funny way. Clayton able to control it with one hand, but couldn't get back to pick it up for the touchdown. Well, you think Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes will sleep well tonight? Oh, well, <laughs> I guarantee they did not sleep well last night. 27 throws already by Marino in this first half. It's third and two. I believe that's an unbalanced line, Dick. Pete Johnson still unbalanced the line. Rumbling this 250 pounds to a first down. It looked to me like they moved the guard over and unbalanced that line on that particular play. Number 84, Bruce Hardy. Tight end, coming from a wing position. Blocking on number 91, Brad Van Pelt, helping to clear the way. Of course, Pete Johnson just buffaloing his way for that first down. 50 seconds remaining in the half as time is called by the Dolphins. They have one timeout left. Remember, they called one uh, late in the first first. The total for the Dolphins is six times. He's done it in one year, and he's about to go seven times today, the way he's putting the ball in the air. Actually, when we say 300 yards, uh, we say an excess of 300. A couple of those games have been 400 yards and more, so Marino has been the hot hand in the NFL. No question about that. Three yards away from the lead. Tony Nathan. Now that'll move the ball to the one-yard line. Look at Davis. Mike Davis wants to talk to the official about it, but I don't think it's going to do any good. There certainly has been a lot of contact on all the pass patterns. That's a mismatch of speed between Davis and Nathan. Davis over to give his opinion to the official who'd thrown the flag. Look in the left-hand corner of your screen. There's Nathan right there, and there's the bump. That's the one they called. That's the one they called. So first down at the one. Pete Johnson has joined Woody Bennett. It's Johnson. Oh. And now the clock is running. 40, 39, 38. The Dolphins have one timeout remaining. They better hurry. That's the elephant backfield with three tight ends. That's the big people in there. They're going right back to the line. Marino will have to call an audible. He says, get down. It's ticking away. 24, 23. He may throw it out of bounds and stop the clock, you know? Oh, barely got the ball to Johnson, and he is the end. No, they're going to mark it just short of the goal line. 12 seconds, 11, 10, 9, and now they call time. Nine seconds. So what appeared to be uh, almost an easy six, first and goal at the one, becomes a little hairy for the Miami Dolphins. They've got time for another play, nine seconds. Tremendous penetration right there. Looks like Matt Millen jumping over the top on that particular play. Johnson actually touching his knee down. You see the ball across the goal line, but they said that his knee was down before he reached out. There's the ball being stretched. I think they're right. I think he did touch it down before he stretched the ball over the goal line. Had he been able to reach out with his knees not on the ground, it would have been a touchdown. Don Shula talking with Marino. The guess is that they'll go for one play a pass, and if they can't find the open man, the incomplete will allow the field goal team to come on. But trailing by four, that missed extra point changes your thinking a little bit, too. It certainly does. A little reminiscence of yesterday's Auburn game. Pat Dye's decisions in that one where he decided to go for the touchdown and not to kick the field goal. One he might remember for a while, Dick. And one the LSU Tigers cheered. Oh, they certainly did. What a small world. Here's Shula's son quarterbacking Alabama and helping Bill Arnsbarger's LSU Tigers Arnsberger, the former defensive wizard under Shula. It is a small world. All right, here we go. Ball inside the one. Nine seconds left. Going to run or pass it? I almost believe they're going to run the football. So yeah, I'm guessing <laughs> that. Because if they run it and they're stopped, then they miss the field right. goal altogether. Right. They've got a. But of course, if they run it wide, you still have the option of going out of bounds and stopping the clock. But they've got the big men in there. They're not going to run it wide. Oh. They're, they're balancing the line. They are going to run, and Bennett does not or does does not oh. get in, and the oh. clock runs out on the Miami Dolphins. 
two, one. The gamble backfires, and what a lift that'll give Tom Flores. Raiders as the first half comes to rather surprising close. Shula gambled, and he lost on that one. That was a gamble. The Raiders come up with a big play. Here's the defensive surge. Ball handed off. Tremendous play on the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go for Woody Bennett. Bulling in there. Howie Long on top. Lyle Alzado down on the bottom. Miami Dolphins with three tries from the one-yard line in the final minute fail, and the Raiders leave the field with the lead at the intermission. That gave the Raiders such a big lift, Dick. I think in the locker room that has a real impact. And we start the second half with Barr kicking off to the Dolphins, 17 to 13 the score. Now in the night of Miami, Bolton Walker. He does not get back to the 20-yard line. Stop cold at the 17. So Dan Marino, as we reintroduce the Dolphins, there's the first half statistics. The Dolphins dominating ball control the bottom line there nearly 19 minutes to 11 the pass interception for a touchdown a key for the Raiders yards passing in the Dolphins corner just a few more yards rushing for the Los Angeles Raiders Raiders offense uh, proving that they could move the ball in this first half too they have exploited the running weakness of the Miami defense the shower has stopped but the grass will be wet here in the third quarter. Oh, Alzado again, and his attack has been to slant sharply in from defensive end. That's the third time he's made a tackle in the backfield with that kind of penetration. Alzado, along with this Raider defense, really feeling the, the challenge of this opportunity to play this Miami offense. And they have, they're coming off a hot streak. They have been playing excellent defense over the last five or six weeks. And the Raider offense has not been playing as well, but defensively, they have just improved and improved. And of course, ranked number two in the NFL, and they're showing you why in this ball game tonight. Against the top rated offense in the entire NFL. Nathan and Carter now behind Marino. That quick arm quarterback finds Nathan, and he has a first down at the 31 yard line. McElroy and Haynes make the tackle. Accuracy. So important for a quarterback with confidence in his arm to be able to throw that ball on target. Nathan was not, uh, did not have enough for the first down when he caught that football. Had to turn and pick it up. It was very fortunate, I think, uh, that he was not grabbed a little sooner. There were about five defenders circling around him. 15 yards on the play. Possession of the second half. Miami trailing the Raiders 17 13, and here comes the all out rush on Marino, and they blow it dead. They say he was in the grass. Marino was going down anyway, so that is only the eighth time this year Marino has been sacked, and only the ninth time for the Dolphin offense. Appropriately, uh, the man who got to him, number 75, Howie Long. Howie coming from the inside here. Marino almost got away. You see it right there. The official determined that uh, Marino was in the grasp of Howie Long. Literally tore his shoulder pad out, had a hold of his shirt. Howie stopped because he heard the whistle, by the way, if you're And Marino was going to go down anyway. He wasn't yeah. going to, to try to throw the ball. You know, Howie has tremendous hand strength. Once he gets a hold of you, he doesn't uh, not gonna let go. Big loss for the Dolphins, 12 yards, so it's second and 22. Marino to the air. And that one skipped short. That's about as far off target as Marino has been the entire game. Mark Duper, the intended receiver. Maybe just wanted to show us that he's human, Dick. <laughs> that was not a good pass. There are the numbers on Marino for the evening. 200 yards even, just as we break into the early part of this second half, and he's well on pace for another three yard or 300 yard outing. Just 23 years of age. You know, Blanda threw his 36 touchdown passes when he was 34. When Marino's 34, it'll be 1995. <laughs> what do we want to say about that? <laughs> what a future for this Miami franchise. Third and 22. 
throw short, but he had to get rid of it under pressure. And perhaps the Raiders have done the one thing that very few have accomplished this year, and that has been to pressure Dan Marino. And Greg Townsend was right on top of the quarterback on that last throw, and he had to dump it off, and it was short. Situation substitution. Greg Townsend from the right side of your screen. Watch him. He'll blitz into your screen right there. Marino could not wait long enough for those receivers to open up. Simply unloaded the football, and that's one of the reasons he has so few sacks. He won't let you sack him, but the wind can is, help it. The wind has really died down, so Roby won't get much benefit from a breeze. And Clee Montgomery, 41, and to the 49 of the Raiders. Bruce Hardy and company on the tackle. Only a 40-yard kick by Roby, seven-yard return, and we have a timeout. 12.30, remaining third quarter, Raiders with the ball and the lead. This is today's Chevrolet, and this is today's Chevrolet. This Chevrolet is specially modified for the international race of champions. This is the new Camaro IROC Z28. The game is brought to you by today's Chevrolet. See today's Chevy. Drive today's Chevy. Live today's Chevy. By Spro's and Spro Light, fire brewed for smoother taste. And by Avis. If you hate to wait, you'll love Avis. Merlin Olsen, Dick Enberg, welcome back to the Orange Bowl. Two quality teams in a playoff environment, and the Raiders leading 17-13 over the favorite Dolphins. Raiders ball first down at their 49. Early in the third quarter, Kenny King, rare carry for him, and the former Oklahoma star is out of bounds at the 45. The Sooners will be here in the Orange Bowl on NBC, and some feel that uh, if BYU stumbles a bit, it might well be Oklahoma playing for the national title on New Year's Eve, on New Year's night. And at the bottom of your screen there, Todd Christensen, a BYU graduate, and there's a man who uh, is ready to come back into the ball game if needed. Tom Flores said, uh, I'm not going to be hesitant about putting him into the ball game, and you got to wonder if maybe Plunkett isn't poised for another one of his miracle comebacks. He's the man. He knows how to write the book. He's been out since the sixth game of the season with that stomach tear. Wilson to Christensen. Hit immediately by Mark Brown, but not until the Raiders have a first down at the Miami 36. The BYU battery there. A couple of Cougars connecting Wilson to Christensen. Check the, the emotion of those final seconds of the first half. The tremendous surge by the Raider defense has really carried into the opening moments of this half. You feel it in the crowd. You too, really don't you? can. You really can. And the Raider defense shutting Miami down. The offense coming right back and moving the ball down the field. Marcus Allen in at the 34 after a two-yard gain. Doug Betters. He's been rather quiet today, and that says a lot for Henry Lawrence, a man who has been charged with blocking the outstanding defensive end of the Dolphins. Lawrence, they call him the killer. Working hard on Doug Betters. I really believe, though, that in Doug Betters and in Howie Long, two of the finest, if not the finest, defensive tackles. Now, they may not get the notoriety of a Mark Gasnell, but believe me, in terms of it being complete players, playing the run, playing the pass, doing everything that's expected of them, I think they do a heck of a lot more. Christensen has another reception and out of bounds with a first down at the 21. 13 more yards for Christensen, who's moving on that 70 catch mark for the year. Oh, he has been productive to think that, well, I guess part of it was the own, his own stubbornness. He did not want to be a tight end. He was a running back at BYU, and when Dallas drafted him in the second round, they suggested he become a tight end, didn't want to, let him go. Giants had him for a while. Couldn't find a place for him, and finally he was convinced, hey, maybe that's my spot. Boy, were all the coaches right. He is some tight end. Kenny King putting on the brakes and getting outside. Gets a block. And down at the 10-yard line, I believe that was Doki Williams out there helping him along. Was indeed, and what a blessing speed is. King starting to his right. There was no hole. The defense totally committed to that side. King just Stopped. It looked like he put on the brakes on both sides and just bounces back the other way. Tremendous reaction using his speed. Wild Black with 42. There's Doki Williams. He just got in the road over there. William Judson, 49. And they have an important first down just inside the 10-yard line. So first and goal, the full 10 yards for the Raiders. Frank Hawkins. 
for three. Bob Brzezinski, 59 on the bottom of the pile, a former Ohio State All-American and one of the better backers against the run. Former Los Angeles Ram came here after he quit the Rams in 80. Born on New Year's Day, and he well has celebrated his birthday in a football uniform several times. The Raiders have gone to their two tight end plan here with Casper in a wing situation just outside of Todd Christensen. There he is, Dave Casper, the other tight end, and the veteran from Notre Dame gets six more on the board for the Raiders. Well, the echoes goes to the post. That's not really a true post pattern, but this is what the Raider coaching staff put in to take advantage of the two tight end situation. Casper just sliding in from the right hand side. You'll see him coming into the picture right there, number 87, breaking open across the middle, working on Charlie Bowser, 56, the linebacker. And Casper has put six points on the board. Barr will see if he can put up a seven. Good. So Casper, only three catches all year, but two of those for touchdown. And with 9.35 left in the third quarter, Raiders 24, Miami 13. The record to be admired, 4-0 against one of the Masters. Bolton Walker deep. On five. Oh, look at this, and it should work. The Raiders have recovered at the Miami 49-yard line. Oh, they caught Miami with their backs turned. That, of course, the perfect opportunity to take advantage of a team totally unexpected. Barr just kicking a little roller down the field and following it himself. He almost fumbled it back to Miami and looked back. like he had trouble getting his handle on it. He just taps it right here and stays right on top of it. Actually, three Raiders, Jeff Barnes, a blocker, and he's the guy that got down and got on top of it. The two Raiders, who would ordinarily be the men to go down and break the wedge, were actually assigned to be blockers in that situation, running ahead of Barr to keep the defenders away from the football. It went the necessary 10 yards, actually was 12 yards downfield before covered by Barr. And that's got to be, that's almost like a pitcher hitting a home run. That's a big moment for a kicker. Perfect execution of the onside kick. And it is most effective when you do the unexpected. First downs today, first down play apparently. Yeah, though, look at the average on those first down situations. 14 plays with an average of 5.9 for the Raiders. Much more successful on the early downs than Miami. Here's Marcus Allen, and he's going to better the average some more as he plows for about 12 to the Miami 39. Now the Raiders certainly have momentum on their side and an 11-point lead on the scoreboard. Always an embarrassing moment for the special teams coach when that kind of play works. However, the special teams coach uh, for the Dolphins, really uh, the man himself, John <laughs> Shula. So it's pretty hard to chew anybody else out. I don't think the Dolphins have been this far behind all year, have they? 24 to 13? Hawkins for a few. <laughs> Miami Dolphins, they've lost only once, and that was in overtime after Von Chaman missed a 44-yard field goal in San Diego that would have won it in the final seconds, and the Chargers won in overtime. The only defeat suffered by Miami. Interesting Dick to to have followed the Raiders through this season. Early in the year, they talked about the fact that they could turn it on when they wanted to. They reached for the gas a couple of times, didn't have it. But suddenly here, late in the season, they appear to be getting back into the swing. Hawkins, little inside move on a trap and nothing much there. A gain of a couple will be third and five. Baumhauer from Alabama down the bottom of the pile playing with that bad ankle but refusing to go to the sideline. He was hurt actually in the San Diego game two weeks ago. Ed White, huge tackle, dove on the back of his leg. Baumhauer will come out in this situation as they try and get the, a couple of extra bodies in there to rush the passer. Third and six. Third and seven actually. Wilson is 0 for 3 in third downs. Crowd trying to help the Miami defense. Incomplete. Intended for Barnwell, who was injured earlier the shoulder. And 
apparently okay. See if the Raiders go for a long field goal. No, Ray Guy comes in to punt. Another late games. Seattle leading Detroit 21 to 17 at the end of three quarters. Of course, Seattle knowing that Denver, as you see Barnwell limp off, uh, has lost at Kansas City in overtime, and the Rams lead 27 to 7 over New Orleans after three quarters. It looked like someone may have stepped on the inside of his leg. It looked like their cleats had ripped right through uh, into the back of his leg as he was heading for the sideline there, but that pass was not well thrown. Wilson's timing was, was off on the play, and he was kicking himself as he left the field. So the onside kick recovery does not lead to any further advantage for the Raiders. Ray Guy aiming his punt, and they will mark it at the eight-yard line. Rifle shot for Guy, who, who is becoming better all the time at putting that ball out of bounds inside the 20. Seven minutes, 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Raiders still leading by 11. for Marino and the Dolphins. They've got work to do. 7.26 left, third quarter. In his own goal line. His receiver had slipped to the ground. Mark Clayton. Lester Hayes on the coverage. Turf continuing to play an important role here. Raiders had shifted their secondary, playing both receivers on the wide side, doubling up on them. Seattle with a four-point lead in the fourth quarter at the Kingdom, and the Rams lead by plenty against New Orleans at home in Anaheim. Those games have progressed into the fourth quarter. Our game running slower than that. If you recall, we had about a five-minute delay at the very start of the game on the opening kickoff when Rodell Thomas, the Miami Dolphin linebacker, was injured. He has been taken to the hospital with a neck injury. We have no other information to share with you. to Tony Nathan and bounced out near Nat Moore. Mike Davis on the coverage. Raiders overloading the right side of the Miami line, putting Howie Long over Stevenson to occupy him and able to stunt, break a lineman free was the pressure really that, uh, that forced the pass to be erratic. And here's an interesting down, deep in their own end. Marino and the Dolphins third and a full 10 for a first down with a great pass offense, but a Raider defense that certainly has been their match thus far. And Marino calls these third down situations, the passing downs himself. Two of six on third down in the game. There's his man, Nathan, and a first down at the 20-yard line. If it's ruled a reception, it is. Dan Marino, why Shula has allowed him to call those plays? He said, when you call a pass play, there's so much terminology. And he said, by the time Shula repeats it to a messenger, the messenger repeats it to me, and I call a play, and then we go to the line, we simply cannot do that. Here's the shot from behind as Marino obviously called a good play. Nathan just cutting to the inside, waiting until the last second again, a timing pattern. That's the kind of uh, pattern that uh, they've been very successful with today. From our unique position on the goalpost with that camera, you saw the quickness of the arm of Marino. Now he lost this one, and it fell in between Nathan and Mark Duper, and Marino kisses the turf under pressure again. Raiders coming aggressively with the blitz in a number of situations here to try and get additional pressure on Marino. He's probably been hit more today, Dick, than in any other game he's played all year. He's right about it. Uh, he's over the 50% mark, is he not, for the game uh, as we check the statistics. He's been under 50% only once all year, Marino, and that was against Indianapolis, and he's 18 for 34 today. There are the Blackwood boys, uh, Lyle the senior, and Glenn the younger brother, the two safety men for Miami. Well, they look like twins. Well, they're a couple of tough dudes, too. Right? Second and ten. before the snap, but I don't see any flag down. Marino goes down, and that will be logged as a sack. Can't help but wonder if maybe uh, Stevenson didn't miss the count. He was the only one moving. Everybody else moving after the fact. 
That sometimes happens if a center blows the count, gets the ball up early. Very often a fumble will, re will result in that kind of situation. I understand that Eric Dickerson has, has 1,746 yards for the season. He's over the 100-yard mark against New Orleans in three quarters today. So he's, he's moving roughly, on O.J. Uh, he's roughly right on pace for O.J.'s record, isn't he? That was considered a run, not a sack. It was not a sack, a run. Marino. That'll be a first down. What an important throw as he hits Dan. Joe Rose, Rose's first catch of the game. Van McElroy, number 26, plays center field in most situations for this Raider defense. Dropping way off the ball, trying to read the eyes of the quarterback. There he is in the center of your screen. Now you'll see Rose coming in at the top of your picture right there. There he is right there. And it's Otis McKinney, 23, and McElroy who finally come over to make the play. But you notice how deep McElroy is. They don't want to give the Miami Dolphins that long bomb. 19 yards to dig out of the hole on third down. Marino goes to work. An embarrassing moment for the young man from Louisville as he got a lucky bounce and a 64-yard touchdown, 38th of the year for Marino. There was a collision between McElroy and Mike Payne right here. The two of them clashing together right on the heels of Clayton knocking each other off the tackle and Clayton has it all alone as he goes down and what a lucky bounce that ball bounced right up into his hand doing his celebrating a little early and I'm sure there'll be a small lecture from uh, coach Shula during film time on Monday 92 yard drive engineered by Marino strictly with a pass John Chalman gets the extra point with four minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the third quarter, the Dolphins are back within four. Let's look again at the reason for that play's success. It was McElroy coming across and diving across at the receiver and bumping into Haynes right there. They literally knock each other off and free Mark Clayton down the field. And Clayton may have learned a lesson and lucky to get away with a six. Mercedes-Benz 190 class for 1985. So masterfully engineered that it can perform with the world's finest sports sedans. And that makes it exciting. So we've showed a couple of tough plays on third down and Clayton 64 yards on the payoff. And it's a 24-20 lead for the Raiders. Von Schaumann sends Greg Pruitt too deep in the end zone. The Raiders will take the touchback. So we mentioned on NFL 84 that while Marino now at 38 touchdowns this year, the all-time record is to be applauded. Let's not forget the greats of the past. And 25 years ago, that man, John Unitas, in a 12-game season, had 32 touchdowns frozen. His coach later was Don Shula, now with Marino. And he had some interesting thoughts about the two men yesterday, didn't he? He certainly did. Would not compare the two. But believe me, if, if Marino can stay healthy, if he can maintain the skills that he has developed so quickly. He will make a shamble to the record book at a very young age. Listen to this crowd. Whoa. start to go a little sour on it. And you can feel the emotion kind of turning to the side of the Raiders early in this half, at the, right at the end of the half and at the beginning of the second half. Great players will come forward to make the great plays. And you said it, Marino made the big plays on that drive, got them in for the touchdown, and it changed the emotional level here 100%. That looked like it had interception written all over it as there was 
with the Dolphin in front and a Dolphin behind. It looked too tall, and Christensen just stole it away. Bowser hit Wilson just as he threw it. Wilson throwing under tremendous pressure. A.J. Dewey, the man who's covering Christensen, but if that ball had been an inch higher, it could never have been caught. In fact, it would indeed have been intercepted. Here it is again. You see Bowser hitting Wilson as he delivers it. It's short of the first down. Third and two. There's no way to hear your signals out there, Dick. Wilson calls time. And you can credit that time out to the Orange Bowl crowd of 75,000. I really believe if he had asked the official that he could have gotten an official timeout in that situation. As it is, he has taken a Raider timeout. And that could play, importantly, in the fourth quarter. We still have 333 left in this third period. We might mention that the Dolphins behind only three times at halftime all year won those three games. They've been outscored only twice in the second half this season and once by the team that beat them, the San Diego Chargers, who took them into overtime and that magnificent uh, uh, rally by Dan Fouts, you know, one of the best we've ever seen. Van Shula is talking to there in that picture, John Sandusky. You mentioned him earlier, the offensive line coach. Definition of a winner? Oh, boy, is that ever... You know, I think one of the things that makes him such a fine coach is that his love of the game shows through. His concentration shows through, and he has a way of generating that kind of even pressure on his players. They know they're going to have to perform at their peak if they're going to play on a Shula team. There's good emotion without the pressure. He's not, a, he's not the kind of guy that spends the whole week screaming and yelling at you. But he is emotional during the games, and he'll occasionally explode at his players. Talking with the offense, it's third and two. I don't think he'll be able to hear this time either. And this time he asks the referee for some help, and Ben Grice says, okay, I'll try to calm the crowd. Normally this doesn't work. Well, once you let the crowd know that they can control the game, you've got a problem. Let's go back to Shula and, and what he said about United just to complete our that relationship. He said the two things that he remembers most and admired most about United, one, he said, was his toughness. He would always give his receivers the extra step because he would take the pounding. He'd wait to the last second. And the other is he really wrote the book. United wrote the book in the two-minute drill. Well, as one who performed often against Shula when he was in Baltimore or against the Colts. I can vouch for both of those things. And, but again, I think it's the combination. Good quarterbacking and good coaching that makes for a great offensive team. Third and two, the Dolphins players asking the crowd to quiet so that they can go to work. Wilson says, I can't hear. a situation that many feel would be rectified if you could put a small receiver and transmitter in the helmet to the player. Well, Commissioner Pete Rosell said that they might well experiment with that in the uh, preseason next year. Well, I hope they work better than the mics we put on our officials. <laughs> <laughs>
150, Dallas and the Raiders. Dallas already updated 156 with their win today. Miami and Dallas in a virtual tie for the best record. Shula and Landry battling it out too. 24-20, <laughs> the Raiders lead. First down at the 17, and do we have an interesting piece of statistical information to say for Aldato pressuring, and Duper has it anyway. First down at the 32. Part of the equation that creates a successful pass play, give the quarterback time to throw the ball. Dwight Stevenson, number 57, on the nose, playing on Bill Pakel, doing a great job. Pakel, who has become an excellent pass rusher, could not get anywhere near the quarterback on that play. 16 yards to the 33-yard line. Clayton to the right. We understand that that is now not a touchdown pass. Now they've changed it back. Okay. It is a touchdown pass. They were going to say that was a fumble run for a touchdown. Bennett blasting to the 40-yard line and a gain of seven. We had, there was a contemplation that since Clayton in celebrating early fumbled the ball that that would not be a touchdown pass but a fumble run for a touchdown. Now they've reversed their thinking and uh, I think justifiably called it a touchdown pass the 38th of the year. Seattle opens its lead against the Lions to 14 in the fourth quarter. That would give them sole possession of victory. First place as Denver was upset in overtime by Kansas City today. We might have three teams out of the AFC West. Could have three out of the NFC East in the play. Bennett breaking a tackle. 40, 50. Finally out of bounds at the 38. Rod Martin, number 53, missing the tackle on Woody Bennett on the outside. Good blocking on the inside to pin down the Raider defense. The center, Dwight Stevenson, doing an excellent job on that play. You'll see him right in the center of your screen on Reggie Kinlaw, number 62. His job to cut Kinlaw off, not only cut him off, but got a second block on Matt Millen. Tremendous job. Now watch the play by Bennett, running right out of the tackle of number 53, Rod Martin. Leg strength, broke away, and then showing some surprising speed for a big man. The injury to Andre Franklin. Bennett is the leading rusher for the Dolphins this year, and that was his longest run, 23 yards of the season. Marino now in Raider territory. Gets it out to Nathan. Ducks the tackle. 20. 10. Down at the 11-yard line as he ran by Jack Squirek. You very often see a quarterback duck underneath the on-rushing defensive lineman. That's exactly what Tony Nathan did as Squirek tried to come over the top. Watch it yourself. Squirek coming from the inside looks like a sure tackle. Nathan just ducks underneath his arm and heads up field. Picks up an extra 15, 20 yards before he's finally knocked down. Well, you talk about Marcus Allen, a great all-purpose player, but so is Nathan. He is really does the job for the Dolphins in the same regard. Certainly does. Great pass receiver, too. At the 11 yard line, Miami trying to strike for the lead. And there it is! Marino has his third touchdown of the game. 11 yards to Clayton. 14th touchdown. That's a Miami record. Clayton breaking Matt Moore's single season mark. The challenge continues. Clayton, man to man on Lester Hayes. Hayes all over Clayton, but Marino didn't care. He threw the ball in there anyway, and Clayton caught it. Watch Hayes. You can't cover much better man-on-man. -man. He's right on top of him, but Clayton just goes up in the air right over the top of Lester Hayes and catches the ball anyway. Oh, great coverage, too. Now for the extra point try, which in its own way has been an adventure. Von Schaumann trying to make it 27-24. kick by the Raiders when they had an 11 point lead. We we're unable to move the ball. Boy, Marino in no time at all in this third quarter has marched his team to two quick touchdowns. Both by pass. 39 touchdowns for the year for young Dan Marino. And this one, again, shows what tremendous confidence he has, not only in his arm, 
but also in his receivers. And Mark Clayton, you know, Merlin, he was the 29th wide receiver selected a year ago in the draft. 29th out of Louisville. Last year he caught six passes. This year he has 13 touchdown catches. Well, he certainly drew some high praise from Lester Hayes, the man trying to cover him on that play. He said, I cannot believe the improvement that Clayton has made just since the preseason game when we played them earlier in L.A. I'm sure no one more discouraged by that play. Look at Lester. Boy, he is he is down. Is this game over yet? <laughs> oh. 38 seconds left in the third quarter. Here's what Marino has done. Down 24 to 13. It took him only 229 to go 91 yards and then 153 to go 83 yards and regain the lead 27-24. Yep. Now it's the Raiders' turn. Let's see if they can get themselves back into this ballgame. On that last drive, Marino three for three, 53 of the yards passing. He's over 300 yards again. And this third quarter isn't over. What a game. Pruitt. He's had trouble, and he's not going to run it out. There's the experience paying off. Knew he didn't have to run it out, and will take the touchback. He bobbled three punts in the second half last week against Indianapolis, and thereby has lost his job as the punt returner to Clay Montgomery. For years. Pruitt, one of the most sure-handed of receivers, and suddenly starting to think about making that catch. And I'm sure it's the mental process that's got him baffled. Meanwhile, the cornerbacks of the Raiders, Hayes and Haynes, trying to grab some air and wonder, what can we do to stop this Marino pass attack? The home field announcing its presence, that advantage. Crowd, I think, feeling they had had a part in stopping that last drive. Again, trying to get involved in this game, and you see the Dolphin players who know that this is not going to work. You know what, I get a kick out of the Dolphin players when they raise their hands. As if it's almost to say, quiet, but don't quiet. I mean, we want to play, but don't really be quiet. Here we go. Pile 51 along with Baumhauer 73. Boy, he is a bull in the middle of that defense. Two tight ends in the ball game. Dave Casper. You saw him catch it pass earlier for a touchdown. He's blocking in this situation. Really a tough blocker, excellent blocker. Blocking on Charlie Bowser, number 56. Kept him right out of the play. And that is the end of the third quarter here in Miami's Orange Bowl. The score, the Dolphins 27, the Raiders 24. And we'll be right back messages from your local station. It's brought to you by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. By exceptionally smooth Michelob. Where you're going, it's Michelob. And by Kodak. When the moment means more, trust it to Kodak Videotape. Well, at the start of this season, folks looked at the schedule and said, wait till December early. The Dolphins will host the Raiders, and this one has lived up to all the expectations. Sellout crowd, 27-24, the Dolphins lead. We open the fourth quarter. Christensen, one of the few tough chances he has not come up with. Glenn Blackwood was right there for Miami, and that'll bring up third down and seven. Let's go through the scores of the day. These are the finals early. 16-13, that was not overtime, but Kansas City winning it late. 20-10, to 10, the Giants over the Jets. Pittsburgh lost in overtime to Houston, 23-20. Final, St. Louis upsetting New England, 33-10. That all but knocks New England out of the playoff picture. Dallas wins at Philadelphia, 26-10. We'll give you the rest of the scores. Overtime win, Cincinnati over Cleveland. That puts them a game behind Pittsburgh, so the Central Division race not over. They play, third and seven. There's Christensen and a first down at the 32-yard line for the Raiders, covered by Judson. The rest of the scores. Buffalo winning its second, 21-15, as they held off a Colts rally. 35-17, the 49ers are 13-1. 27-14, Green Bay beats Tampa Bay. 
38-17. Dave Craig in that game has thrown five touchdown passes. The Seattle quarterback, two to Larson, two to Turner. And the Rams lead cut to 34-21 against New Orleans. That's one at home in Anaheim. Here's 27-24. The Raiders trail Miami. Marcus Allen finds a little daylight. He just uses blockers and sees the open cracks in the defense so wonderfully well. 11 yards for Allen. Running with real abandon, literally leaping over the top. Tremendous shot. Great acceleration as you'll watch from behind. And when Allen finally makes the cut, watch him right here. He'll cut up inside and literally jump over the top. Look at the body control there. They finally grab a hold of one more player. And he'd have been gone. 84 yards rushing for Allen, who got a little extra help from Mickey Marvin. Had a pretty good grab on one of the Dolphin defenders. Wilson in trouble. Bob Brzezinski. First sack suffered by the Raiders today. The Miami Dolphins are not a blitzing team, but they felt that they were going to have to do some blitzing to get to Wilson today to break the concentration of the Raider offense. Brzezinski from his linebacking position on the blitz on that play, able to get in successfully. Wilson taking a little too much time, could not find the open receiver, taken to the ground. Don't normally expect Brzezinski to be in on the blitz. It's usually the other linebacker, Bowser. Marcus Allen with long yardage, trying to get outside, cannot. And then at the bottom of that stack, number 59, Bob Brzezinski. Just took Allen's feet out from underneath him. Brzezinski, I think, plays the run about as well as any linebacker in all of football. That'll bring up third down at about 15. We remind you this telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. Long yardage situation. Let's see if they come with a blitz, Dick. One out of eight. Wilson on third down today. Yes, they do. Right there. Bowser from the outside, Brown right there, 51, and Betters from the other side, all three converging on top of Mark Wilson. He did not have a chance. He felt the sting, and here's Guy to kick. Walker back at the 18-yard line, a flag is down. What a kick. Beautiful Whoa. kick. All the way to the 10 to Walker. And he returns at 16 yards to the 26. 58-yard punt by Guy. Special signaling the... Says, give me a captain. Where's the captain? <laughs> Somebody here got to be able to make a call. I think there was an offside against the Raiders. Illegal no, motion. Five again. yards and kick over. The Raiders guy will have to kick it again. 11.46 remaining in the fourth quarter. Miami about to get the ball again with a 27-24 lead after they had seen the Raiders move to a 24-13 advantage middle of the third quarter. There's some interesting changes of emotional level in this game, back and forth. But I think looking back at this game, perhaps the most important series of all was that tremendous drive that Marino put together to kind of put his team back into the driver's seat. They weren't, they didn't go ahead with that drive, but they got back into the ball game, got the crowd involved, and the crowd has played a big role since that time. So Guy, the veteran from Southern Mississippi. Once kicked a field goal in college of 61 yards, a number one pick by the Raiders. That raised some eyebrows back in 73, but what a buy that was. Walker eases up to the 22. Oh, this one not very good off the side of the foot. And an up back will take it. That was one of the Blackwoods, Glenn Blackwood at the 33-yard line. So 
the penalty hurts the Raiders. A gain of about 12 yards on the penalty. Only a 40-yard kick by Guy here at the Orange Bowl. Who will ever forget? Kellen Winslow and his 13 catches and blocked field goals, and they dragged him off the field. This is one of the easier moments for Winslow, who became a star in that magnificent win against the Dolphins a couple of years ago. Isn't it time you experience the outstanding total performance of the Mazda RX-7? Because only then can you feel... You know, on the two marks against Lester Hayes and Mike Haynes. And they have cooked him a bit today. They made some good plays, but they've gone over the top of him. close to a possible interception but about 10 yards to Dan Johnson. Squirick made the defensive play for the Raiders and suddenly the Raiders have been unable to stop Marino after they really had checked him pretty effectively. Raider defense, a big play defense. They showed us that early in the ball game. They need a big play now. They need a turnover. They need to make something happen. They've got to kind of get things going again for their team. And it's been this Raider defense that really has demonstrated the leadership over the last half of this season. Let's see what they can do in a relatively tough situation against a, a hot-handed Marino I, on that last play. He, Marino has no fear. I mean, that's an interception pass, and yet he just throws it right in and completes it. Second and one. Second and that much for a first down. And a reminder that uh, this game running late, so... Some of you will not see all of Silver Spoons tonight. It's a great lineup on Sunday night, and one of my favorites, Paul Newman and Ford Apache the Bronx is our featured film at 9 o'clock Eastern time, so we hope you'll stay right with us here at NBC. As we come down to the wire, we'll have Saturday telecast the next two Saturdays as well as the full fair on Sundays approaching the playoffs. Second and inches. Let's see if Marino doesn't gamble and maybe go for the long bomb here. Millen made the tackle. For the Raiders, this is what's at stake for them. Miami's already clinched the playoff spot and the AFC East. Denver losing. Seattle is winning, so they'll be 12 and 2. The Raiders at 9 and 4. Should they lose, then New England's loss today at home against St. Louis. Well, Patriots will only be a game back, and actually they have the advantage if the two tie, if New England and the Raiders should tie at the end of the year. I think the New England Patriots certainly have some advantages on the schedule, too. The last couple of ball games uh, not as tough as those the Raiders will have to play. The Raiders have to go to Detroit on Monday night and then play Pittsburgh at home. And the Steelers now are in their own dogfight. Now, that was a tough chance for Clayton. He was trying to stay inbounds, and he just didn't have enough room with which to work because Lester Hayes had pinned him on the corner. Monday night game against the Lions in Detroit, and then the Steelers, and that suddenly becomes a most important game. The Dolphins are playing for home field advantage throughout the playoffs, go to Indianapolis and finish at home against Dallas, a critical game undoubtedly for the Cowboys to close out the year. So the whoever defies that wild card concept certainly kept a lot of fans happy because so many teams going right down to the final week and week to decide whether they'll be in the playoffs. Shula in the Orange Bowl, mighty tough to beat. Second and ten. Woody Bennett greeted rudely by Bill Tackell, the second-year man from Rutgers. Tackell and Martin in on that tackle. That's the kind of rough play that the Raiders need to start putting together one after another here. They would still like to shake that football loose. You know, there was an amazing stat. Uh, in the last four games, the Dolphins' opponent had not fumbled the ball a single time. I think in concentration, your concentration against the tough opponent really improved. The opponents in the last four games prior to this game had not fumbled a single time, not even recovered their own fumble in those four games. Just one today, Barnwell, that was deep in Miami territory early in the game. On third and 13, going long for Clayton, and it hit Hayes in the back, and a flag is down. The flag down way upfield. I don't think it had anything to do with the action we saw. And another in the backfield of the Dolphins. I think there may be a holding call, and I believe this flag was an illegal bump, Dick. That would appear to be the call from the far side. But let's let the officials sort it out. Marino's pass hit Lester Hayes. It looked to be in the back of the helmet. Well, of course, that's legal. As long as he is not 
putting his hands up and waving them. He's allowed to take that position. Holding on the offense. Personal foul on the defense. We're going to play it over. No numbers given. The man in the baseball cap is Don Strzok, backup quarterback, who plays a very important role on this team. A really an unusual man. A very bright football mind. A man who has to play a, a second-team quarterback has to be ready to play every week without being able to take the bow. Struck, struck, tipped his head here. You. <laughs> he must have heard us on that play. He also will send information into Marino. He's, he's got an excellent football mind and a great feel for defense. Third down, 13. the 50, far short of the first down. Marino unhappy. Another flag is down. Back where Marino threw the ball. Appeared to be against Miami, and if that's the case, the Raiders undoubtedly will decline. I see John Geisler coming over. I, I talked to him. He's, of course, responsible for keeping Al Zato off of his quarterback, and I said, are you Offensive worried? Offensive holding, number 79. Decline the penalty. It's fourth down. That's John Giesler that I'm talking about. His job to keep Alzado off the quarterback. I said, are you worried about what Alzado might do to you? He said, I don't care. Let Alzado do anything he wants to me. I just don't want him to hit Marino. So, uh, of course, his job to protect the quarterback, and that, that was not Bruce Davis, as you saw that. He says, I got John enough Giesler, of my own problems. Yeah. Don't give don't me Giesler's penalty. Lee Montgomery lets that one go, and it takes a Raider bounce will be finally down at the 25-yard line. Let's go back and take a, a second look at Geisler working on that last play. The officials detecting a holding call. And Roby not at all happy. Actually, it's, it's uh, Howie Long in this particular situation, and he just had a hammerlock on Howie's arm. 9.07 remaining in the fourth quarter. The Raiders a field goal away from a tie. We've seen it at regular time on the West Coast and out in Hawaii, but the rest of you after our game here from the Orange Bowl will be Punky Brewster, Knight Rider, Paul Newman starring in Fort Apache, the Bronx at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Dick Enberg with Merlin Olsen, fourth quarter, 9.07 left. The Raiders trailing by three, 27-24, have the ball at their statistically the 25, the ball over the 24-yard line. Wilson in trouble. And now throws for Doki Williams, and this could be a touchdown. The Raiders take the lead. And it was Wilson extricating himself from the pressure and finding Doki Williams on a broken pattern, we would guess, 63 yards and a touchdown. See the on the far side of the field and the official over to talk to them but Doki Williams showing you that blazing speed Wilson trapped in the backfield was able to swing to the outside and let's watch Doki as he finally sees his quarterback in trouble and now breaks up field William Judson 49 the man trying to catch up with him just does not have enough speed to match strides with Doki and Doki will carry it in for six points 75 yards officially on that throw. <laughs> what a game this is. Very important extra point because that gives the Raiders more than a field goal lead. It's now 31-27. Again, the look at Wilson here. Now watch the pressure from the right side. He literally is trapped here at Baumhauer. 73. He gets away. Remember, Baumhauer playing with that injured ankle could not keep stride with Wilson. And he gets the job done. Sure like another stroke. No way. Alex? <laughs> Two cold strokes. <laughs> almost nine minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. Dick, you can almost feel the emotion drain out of these fans. They've been so high with the great comeback Miami. Miami going ahead and responding to Marino's touchdown passes, but that pass from Wilson and everything just went slack and quiet here in this magnificent stadium. I mean, it's jam full of people. Not a soul is left. Barr, a 
again roots one high and deep and Fulton Walker going to gamble four yards deep. Ten, fifteen, some acrobatics running to the twenty. Actually across the twenty, technically a twenty-five yard return for Fulton Walker. You've got to wonder if it's worth it for that one yard he gained uh, beyond the twenty. Virginia Mountaineer Colvin Walker who had that Super Bowl record kickoff return for a touchdown against the Redskins out of the Rose Bowl. The Dolphins have not done well in the run back department this year. I think in fact they're ranked last in that department in the NFL. Dick. Don Shula now has the ball in the midst of his young quarterback Dan Marino who can light up the board in a hurry as he showed us in the third quarter when the Dolphins fell behind by 11. for Clayton. There he is. And knocked out of bounds at the plan. A flag will go with it as Clayton was hit late in the judgment of the official. Lester Hayes will get an added 15 onto that one. Don Shula right over to talk to Lester Hayes instantly. Shula had complained earlier that Hayes was hitting late on the sideline. The officials right there on that play and they concurred as Clayton was clearly going out of bounds. Hayes giving him the extra shot both wide receivers to one side of the field. They come in motion. They force Lester Hayes to come from the inside. Well, I don't know. If I'm on the other, I'll tell you, if, I, if I'm on the Raiders side of the field, I've got to be a little upset that Shula can put that kind of pressure on the official. Now, there was a, a hit. I don't think Clayton was yet out of bounds. Hard to tell from that angle. Nevertheless, the penalty makes it a first down at the 41. Clayton has 140 yards and two touchdowns and catches. And Marino is back for the second time. And the ball loose after the whistle. Bill Paquel and Greg Townsend, two of those young defensive linemen for the Raiders making the play. With 8.32 left in the fourth quarter of this, Danny, let's check elsewhere. New York we go. All right, Dick, in Seattle, the Seahawks have taken sole possession of first place in the AFC West, beating the Lions today. Dave Craig threw five touchdown passes, this one of 51 yards to Daryl Turner. Seattle at one point trailed 17-14. They come back to win going away. All right, Bill, and of course, uh, Craig had a 400-yard game last week against Denver, so the young quarterback from Milton of Wisconsin is certainly finding his uh, way a rather golden one here late in 84. The Seahawks are in first place. Tony Nathan looking for daylight. Oh, what a move! James Davis saved a touchdown at the 44. A flag is down back at the line of scrimmage. I'm afraid it's a flag that's going to negate that beautiful run. Explosive running by Nathan. They're going to, ca they're going to carry it all the way back. And I think... Ooh, Van McElroy challenging McElroy Marino. Is angry. Well, I don't think he was mad at Marino. I think he was mad at Clayton. I think Clayton said something to him as he walked back. Flipping. And maybe McElroy said, hey, that's my career you're playing with. Well, I can't imagine a playoff game having more outstanding. Uh, 83 on the offense. Play. Exactly what Intensity it was. is uh, certainly at a peak. Imagine going through 13 games with three with eight sacks on the season. Here's 83 right here. Let's see what he did. Let's see if he did take McElroy down from behind. That's what McElroy was mad about right there. No question, a clip, and that's the kind of decision a young player occasionally will make and regret later on. McElroy's not the kind of guy to mess around with. Unusual for the Dolphins to have five penalties in a game. For the Raiders, that's almost a low count, isn't it? Marino dumps it off. Nathan again. Caught from behind and drops the 35-yard line. The 15-yard clipping penalty. Not a 10-yarder, but 15 yards. And so Miami really working out of the hole on first down. As you see the clock, time remaining in the fourth quarter. Raiders 31, Miami 27. Third down, 16. And the crowd certainly is a very different quiet. Audience. Very quiet. Yeah. Well, Marino knows how to get him back in the ball game, <laughs> and he can do that. He is such an explosive quarterback. Of course, he has great tools to work with. There he goes deep. Intercepted by Hain. His second interception of the day. Forty. He has one touchdown. Fifty. Forty. 
15-yard line, and there's an all-pro cornerback. 56 yards unofficially on the return to go with a 97-yard touchdown return in the first quarter. Jimmy Cephalo, number 81, the intended receiver. And Mike Haynes had a good jump on the football. He'll be outside on this play. You should see him right there. He read it all the way. Left his man, cut inside, left Duper number 85, and just stole the football from Jimmy Cephalo. Upfield showing some good running skills. New England, they said this young man could have been a running back, could have been a wide receiver, enough skill to literally, literally to do anything, anything he wanted to do. Dick. He's leading all runners in the entire game. 153 yards for him and two tries. And now the crowd trying to help Miami. Marcus Allen. Ooh, hammered and then takes a little extra shot to the face bar. Good old helmet. That one just paid for itself. <laughs> There is Otis McKinney, out of breath after helping uh, Mike Haynes downfield. Lesser Hay. Look, 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 look at look at I, both those guys. Look at all the oxygen there. They're all working on the oxygen over there. We talked about the humidity. Even though the sun has been down for a long time, it is still a hot and humid night. And believe me, the running that those defensive backs are doing tonight, they're more than earning their salaries out on this field. Second and eight. who's over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. Doesn't get the first down yardage. Out of bounds. Casper at about the seven. Excuse me, Casper continues to throw excellent blocks. It's interesting, in this two tight end situation, he's actually got Todd Christensen blocking. Christensen doesn't really like the block, but Casper has been doing such a great job of blocking that Christensen, uh, almost by comparison, had to start blocking in there. Do you see Lankford on that play? Casper knocked him down. Then Hawkins came out, knocked him down again, and he still got in on the tackle, the cornerback for Miami. There's Allen with 97 yards today to lead all rushers over the 1,000-yard mark again. A big, big play, third and two. Great time for play action here if they can use it. Nope. It goes to Allen outside. He'll have it. He walks it in. The 16th touchdown of the season for Marcus Allen, our NBC Sports sign. Stopping him as he goes through the end zone. He was skidding over in that concrete area, or sharp area, trying to stop his momentum. Martin waving a sole digit to the fans and saying, hey, we're number one. We'll prove it right here. 6.07. Still a lot of time left in this ball game. And this might be an opportunity if you could get in to block that extra point to make something happen here for the for the Dolphins. Bars try for point is good. So after the interception by Mike Haynes, and boys, he played an important role in this game. Three Allen runs and the 15 yards consumed. The last six on this scamper through the right side untouched. Marcus Allen gives the Raiders a 38-27 lead. Allen threading his way through the crowd. So hold up. Go on. Lighten the load. Lighten the load. Throw down the... More excitement still to come on NBC. Silver Soons to a Spoons will be seen out on the West Coast. Or Silver Soons, my favorite. Out in Hawaii, Punky Brewster, Knight Rider, and Ford Apache. The Bronx, Paul Newman, like to have you stay with us. Well, it's been like Ford Apache, the Bronx. <laughs> Boy, it has. The steam of Miami, and the Dolphins trail by 11 as Fulton Walker jumped at the 14-yard line by Derek Jensen, the captain of the Raiders special teams, the man who blocked that punt in the Super Bowl that led to the touchdown for the Raiders that got them going toward their Super Bowl title last year. Number 31. What a great job he has done. Right in the middle of your screen. Just blows by everyone all by himself. A one-on-one -on -one tackle here. Takes down an elusive runner in Fulton Walker. Walker looked like he was running at full speed and maybe that loose turf out there making it difficult for those runners and receivers to make that quick cut, Dick. Needless to say, the 38 points surrendered by the Dolphins today, the most scored against Miami this year, 38-27. But the way Marino can move a club, and he starts from the shotgun plenty of time. This is a Kit Carter from Alabama all the way to the 30-yard. 
yard line before Mike Haynes can make the tackle. Rod Martin assisting it. Marino here at 23 in a second. You're already with a presence. He knows he has to score twice. He has one field goal, one touchdown even won't do it. Two touchdowns. He's only got five and a half minutes. He's saying let's not waste a second. Coming quickly back now by allowing Marino to call those third down plays, and I'm sure he's calling the plays in himself, himself in the huddle here, all passing plays. They can get them off much more rapidly, Dick. 15 yards on that last play. Marino to Clayton. How in the world did that ball get through Lester Hayes? He can't believe it. Lester's saying that Clayton put his arm back, and I believe he did. I think Clayton actually used his arm to, to push off a little bit. Watch him just after he makes the cut. Just a little shove right there, making enough room for that ball to drop through, but the officials didn't catch it. What a throw. First down at the 49. 20 more yards for Marino, who's over the 400-yard mark. Joe Rose picked up a few more. That's uh, just pocket change for Marino, who gets knocked down pretty hard himself by Sean Jones. On every play, this drive, Marino has either been hit or pressured. Tremendous pressure generated by the Raider defensive line. They are just coming relentlessly on Marino. Look at the numbers. 424 yards more for Marino. Good He's going to break Dan Fouts' single season record, and no one thought they'd uh, touch Fouts to do for almost uh, over 4,700 yards a couple years ago. Mike Davis being attended to by the doctors and trainers. Hard to tell what's wrong. Yeah, we're just a moment ago that Lyle Blackwood, we, we mentioned that he had a cramp in his leg. He will be probably out of the ball game. They apparently cramped up again. A calf problem for him. Something he's suffered with over the past week. That's a break for the Dolphins in one sense. It, the Davis won't be on the field for a play and also it stops the clock without the Dolphins having to spend a timeout. 4.30 left and uh, it will be second and six from the Raider 46. It also allows Coach Shula an opportunity to have some input as to what play will be called. Next weekend, don't forget there's a Saturday game, Buffalo and the Jets, and then on Sunday, Seattle, Kansas City, the Chiefs in a spoiler roll, Cincinnati back in the thick of things at New Orleans, Patriots still alive against Philadelphia, Miami at Indianapolis. We'll be out in Denver, Mile High Stadium, to see the Chargers and the Broncos and Houston and the Rams. Rams trying to get a wild card spot. Marino. What a duper. Took it right out of the hands of Mike Hayes. I thought Haynes was going to have his third interception. Well, we build it speed on speed. The two great wide receivers, the two great cornerbacks, and they have battled head-to-head -head all day. You see, again, Hayes letting him go inside. That's an unusual thing. And Duper wanted to lateral that football. He wanted to toss it. Couldn't find anyone. First down. Going for it all. There's Duper. There's a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Howie Long has put tremendous pressure on this Dolphin offensive line. A number of calls today have gone against the people trying to keep him away from Marino. This one was uh, a legal motion. That lit. Marino has set a personal record most throws in a game. But that won't last long the way he likes to get it in the air. Let's go back to that point on Long. And as a defensive lineman, you can so well appreciate how one player that has the, the quality of, of Long can really change. Here's a disciplined team that doesn't create uh, many penalties, the Dolphins. And they, they've had to go to that to stop him. Well, even that penalty, which was a motion penalty, was on John Geisler, the man trying to block on Howie Long. And what he was trying to do was get back quick enough so that Long couldn't get around to the outside. So, although it... What's a holding penalty was definitely caused by his pressure on Marino. First and 15 for the Dolphins. 3.33 left. Almost intercepted by Otis McKinney, intended for Mark Clayton. McKinney has built so much. Another penalty flag down. He looks like he and Mike Haynes could uh, trade wardrobes. We've got a penalty call, I believe, against the Raiders. Stops the clock with 3.28. Left in the fourth quarter. Lined up in the neutral zone. Howie Long. Well, not a perfect night. <laughs> Nobody's perfect. No. But two Raiders in this game have distinguished themselves. You, you know now why they are consistent pro bowlers and all pros. Mike Haynes and Howie Long. And uh, who's going to ever vote against Dan Marino as the top quarterback in the AFC? That's against the Dan Bouts and all the rest of the team. Thank 
Smart smart call. Smart call by Marino. He's had so much pressure. When you're getting that kind of, you're getting that kind of pressure, a couple of things you can do. You can run the draw play. You can run the screen play. This is a little screen play trying to go up the middle. Pickell, right in the middle of your screen. Up in front of Nathan. If he had been able to wait, or if Nathan had been able to get that ball, I think he would have had excellent yardage. And Pickell, realizing a lineman's dream was waiting for him. An interception, a chance to run. <laughs> Pounding the ground. Did anyone hear you when you pound the ground like no, that? No, <laughs> I, Shower, uh, some of the umbrellas in evidence, so light rain falling. Second and ten for Marino from the Raider 34. He needs two touchdowns. Oh, there's almost a movement by Newman. Marino down the middle to Rose. Joe Rose to the five-yard line. Another flag is down, however, and this could be against Miami. It appeared that Newman might have moved before the snap. One of the things that someone moved, let's see, it also appeared to me that one of the wide receivers may have tried to get a little jump. Mike Haynes is putting so much pressure on on the outside that the receiver's trying to get away, and Joe Rose, who got a bad shoulder, you see him. He's backing up before 79 the snap. again, and that's exactly what we talked about earlier. Geisler trying to get back to protect his quarterback. Howie Long putting so much pressure on him that he's trying to jump the count a little bit. They nail him again. So instead of first and goal at the five, another long uh, Marino gain. It's second down and 15. And here comes Jim Jensen. You've got to watch him, number 11. He's their all-purpose. He can play tight end, wide receiver. He's the third-string quarterback, the top player on special teams. And sometimes uh, they'll throw a little trick play out there when Jensen's in the lineup. Let's spot where he's located. He's on uh, the tight end side, near side, number 11 see him. He's got the clean uniform. Kept him in the block. <laughs> I don't think he had that in mind. Short gain to Carter to the 33 where it'll bring up third down and eight or nine. Howie Long again putting pressure on Marino. Counting down to three minutes. Marino's got to explode here. Right now the Raiders playing the clock, Dick. crowds and more incomplete and that'll bring up a fourth and everything fourth and eight because if Marino and the Dolphins can't make a first down here it's all but over 247 left and that goal line stand at the end of the first half where the Dolphins tried three times from the one yard line and then gambled running and ran themselves right out of the half may well be one of the many important points uh, that'll be two up. Flores on the left, Earl Leggett, the man on the right. He should be taking a bow. It's his defensive line that's made life so uncomfortable here in the second half for Dan Marino. Tremendous pressure they've applied to him, Dick, and that's been the difference in this half. He has not had time to cut them apart. He's had to unload the ball before he's been ready to do it. While Alzado replaces Townsend. So this is a free play for Marino, and he gets the first down. Jim Jensen at the 20-yard line. Oh, how many times has this young Marino come up with a clutch play, third and fourth down? The quarterback that many are comparing Marino to is, is Joe Namath, and it's that quick release, that rifle release. You'll see it here. When Jensen opens up, you'll see Marino right there. That ball is in the air before the final cut. A rifle shot. Of course, the penalty is refused. Ball will be inside of the 20-yard line. There's Jensen, who broke all of the great Harry Aganis' records at uh, Boston University. He plays tight end quarterback, wide receiver. He's a snapper, special teams, and also works pretty well on the guitar and harmonica. Anything else? Probably cooks a pretty good omelet, too. He's still in there. 2.41 left. Davis on the blitz, but he gets it off to Nat Moore. And the veteran is to the nine-yard line. First and goal. The clock running. 2.31, 2.30 left. Ten more yards for Marino. He's working on a possible 500-yard day. The ability to react instantly. The blitz was on. Mike Davis coming from the outside. Marino read it. Fired that ball out instantly. The receiver knew what he had to do. They pick up the first down. 450 yards passing for Marino. Looking for a touchdown. He's got it to Duper. Four touchdown passes for Marino. And Tom Flores says, will this game ever end? 
saw Marino, Byrne, Lester, Hayes. On the right side, he comes back in a similar situation, throws to a well-covered Mike du Mark Duper right over the top of 22 Mark Haynes. It's Haynes right there leaning back. He's all over the receiver, can't do nothing to stop it. A perfectly thrown ball and a great catch. 86 yards in 10 plays. Boy, Marino has put him on a 91-yard march, 83 yards, 86-yard marches for touchdowns in the second half. Driver point by Von Schaumann. It was in this spot in the first half where he had one blocked, and that is a very important play in this game because had it not been blocked, it would be a field goal game. A flag is down. Instead, the Dolphins have to get the ball back and score a touchdown, not a field goal. One of the advantages. So let's let the Defense official. Line up at the neutral zone. The point is good. Five yards on kickoff. Well, do you think we'll see an onside kick here? They've got all three timeouts left and 2.09 remaining. 38-34. What a game. Let's go back to the big play, the extra point uh, try, the second touchdown of the Dolphins. This would have made it 14-7 Miami. Watch 99 in the middle of your picture. Sean Jones gets that left hand up. And that now forces Miami to think touchdown, not field goal. And let's think with Shula for a second here. Do you try the onside kick or do you kick it deep and give your defense an opportunity to go after the Raider offense? There's Sean Jones on the sideline. He's been playing a great deal in the defensive line. Youngster out of Northeastern has really made a, a strong adjustment to the game. Had a lot to learn, but is coming on. They're very proud of him on the, the Raider side of the field. I'm sure they're proud of him for what he's done tonight. You know, if the, the Dolphins get the ball back and should get it back deep in their own end, the way Marino is going, believe it or not, that long time record of Norm Van Brocklin, most yardage pass in a single game, could be in jeopardy, but it would take the right circumstances. Don Shaman, will he kick it deep? The Raiders no. don't think so. They're setting up for a possible onside. Loading up on the left side. There it is. The onside kick. Casper bobbled it, but Otis McKinney appeared to fall on it for the Raiders. The ball was free at one time. Went Let's see who came up with it. I'm sure they're fighting for it at the bottom of that sack. The Raiders come up with the ball. Otis McKinney, after Dave Casper, unable to pick it off, has it for the Raiders at the Los Angeles 43 with 2.03 remaining so the Dolphins have the two minute timeout plus their own three left an excellent onside kick by Von Schaumann what you want that ball to do is take a nasty hop at the end like a bad hop for a baseball player there it is came right up Casper got his hands on it couldn't control it the ball took a lucky hop right in there in the hands of McKinney but it wasn't McKinney who came up with it finally and look who is it I can't tell who ended up with it but I don't think it was McKinney who ended up with the ball Crowd trying to help Miami as they did earlier in this half. Frank Hawkins straight ahead, and there's the timeout at the two minute. 159 it comes. Just to quickly brush up. The all-time NFL record is 554 yards passing. Second is 509 all-time. And Marino's already at 450. Here's another fantastic finish. Alcoa presents Fantastic Finishes, 1982. Cleveland's Brian Seif uncorks a looping do-or-die pass that looks like it will be intercepted by the Eagles' Roy L. Young. But no, it's stolen for a touchdown by Ozzie Newsom of the Browns. Cleveland fans rejoice with less than a minute to go, but Philadelphia roars right back. With only 25 seconds left, hard-running Leroy Harris steamrollers Eddie Johnson and lunges into the end zone. A sweet win for Dick Vermeil. Jeffrey, right, but I understand she's been watching the game and we'll be able to enjoy uh, Funky Brewster in progress after the conclusion of this game, if indeed it ever ends. It's 38-34 Raiders, and stay tuned. That's Paul Newman for the pass to the front. Marcus Allen wisely did not go out of bounds. You saw him, there was that moment he hesitated, said, no, stay inbounds, take the short game, and the timeout called by Miami. They have two left, and that stops the clock with 1.52 remaining. John Shula, his coaches along the sideline, 
They would love to see a fumble right now. Right now, Miami hanging on to that football. Next Saturday, the Indiana Hoosiers and the Kentucky Wildcats, an outstanding collegiate basketball game on NBC. The seasons change. From America's heartland to our gleaming cities, young men and those who inspire as well as coach gather for a reaffirmation of a truly American sport. This season, come home to college and six. Will the Raiders throw a pass here to try to get the first down? Pressure is off on the Raiders sidelines. Tremendous reaction to Allen as he started to his left. That whole Miami defense anticipating the run started to their right. Allen registered that, made a quick cut back against the grain and jumped one player and he was gone. Tremendous vision. Watch him starting to the left here. Now sees the defense overreacting and just uses his speed to break it away and take it to the end zone. What a player. Marcus Allen, 156 yards rushing, three touchdowns to extend his NFL lead to 17 touchdowns this year. Talk about great players making the big play in the big game. And Barr adds the extra point. Would you have believed when we walked in the stadium today that the Miami Dolphins would give up 45 points to the Raiders? Statistically, the Dolphins' defense has not done well in many categories, but one of the categories they've been very strong in is points allowed. They were right with uh, Denver most and early Chicago in the year. I think, the they year. Ranked, I think they ranked fifth uh, coming into this ball game. They will not be there after this game. And there is Allen. Look at how the whole defense had overreacted to that play, which started out to their right. And Allen could see that and was able to use his speed to take advantage of it. Certainly in the modern Don Shula era, 45 points would probably challenge a, a negative record for the Dolphins. We have seen the only two defeats for this Dolphin team on the year, Dick, both of which have been high-scoring, explosive games in which the Dolphins have played exceedingly well but have been outscored. This is the team that's fifth in the entire league in least points allowed. That's Bob Brzezinski, one of the men who overreacted. And, I, you know, that's a tough thing. They just wanted to make the play on Marcus. Well, don't wander away because with Dan Marino about to come out, even though it's 45-34, Marino, who has already really rewritten the most touchdowns in a season mark with four more to give him 40 for the year, but... He's going to have a chance of 80 yards of field to work on Norm Van Brockman's long-standing record of most yards passing in a game. 45 points. Oof. I'm sure Tom Flores, who has been concerned about his offense and their ability to score, extremely pleased by what they've done today. Another man who should take a bow on that far sideline, Bob Zeman, defensive coordinator for the Raiders. He's been calling the defenses, and I'm sure right now reminding all of his troops, stay deep, keep everything in front of you, make them work their way down the field. They'll give Marino yardage here. They'll try to keep him from taking the big one. He starts with a triple right. Matt Moore, Mark Clayton, and Seplo all to the right. And Van McElroy, yeah, he's already to the 50-yard line. Marino, throw short and incomplete, and probably a wise drop by Carter, not that he thought of doing that because that would have kept the clock running, and they only had about five yards anyway. Lester Hayes back about 25 yards. McElroy won't even go back to the huddle. The prevent prevent is in there now. Check down and in. Dan Marino at the moment has 470 yards passing. Drake Pruitt and Marcus Allen. Pruitt, who was second to Johnny Rogers for the Heisman back in the early 70s. Marcus, who won it at USC. Well, we've seen some brilliant plays today. <laughs> Greg Townsend, another one as he sacks Marino at the three-yard line. That's the third sack of Marino who had been sacked but seven times all season long. So that was part of the Raider game plan. They had to pressure Marino, and they did. They came into this game dedicated to getting pressure on the quarterback 
The top stackers, as you see them there, Martin, Long, Fakel, Townsend, Davis. That one by Townsend, number 93. We talked about Howie Long earlier in the game. Martin, I don't believe, had one today. But uh, Fakel, definitely a force in the pass rush. Clock running, and the Dolphins taking their time. Now that sack really put them in a third and 27 hole. So fourth and 27 at your three yard line uh, 101 left not many play calls for that. So updating the playoff picture with two weekends to go plus uh, the Bears at San Diego tomorrow night. Miami has clinched the East. They'll go to 12 and 2. Denver loses today to Kansas City so Seattle jumps in front of them for the AFC West but Denver has already clinched a wild card so they are in the playoffs. The Raiders 10 and 4 will take a two game lead over New England and all but assure themselves the wild card berth. So it looks as if it'll be all West in the AFC two Western teams in the wild card and Roby will have to punt from deep in his own end zone. They'll just let this one roll. They won't worry about it. Roby tries to line drive but didn't get all of it. They'll just let that football lay there. To the 43-yard line where the Raiders will have the ball with 49 seconds. Let's go back to the end of the first half. The Raiders led at that time. And the Miami Dolphins had the ball at the one-yard line and three chances. And this is the last with nine seconds left. They don't go for the pass. They try to run it. And Pete Johnson diving in. And you see the penetration from all of the defensive linemen underneath. Linebackers concentrating on the play. And Howie Long let you know right there, they did not make it in. Now to New York. All right, Dick, besides the game you and Merlin are describing from the Orange Bowl, there were two other late games today in the NFL. The first one saw Seattle with five touchdown passes from David Craig defeat Detroit 38-17. At one time, Detroit held a 17-14 lead. Seattle has now won eight in a row, and as you mentioned earlier, they have the AFC West lead alone now at 12-2. The Rams pounded New Orleans 34-21 in the other game. Eric Dickerson had 148 yards. He needs 224 to pass O.J. Dick? So things are interesting in Los Angeles. The Raiders with this win today, and the Los Angeles Rams, and Eric Dickerson. Wilson, who had his rough spot early, but certainly has played very well in the late going. One has to wonder why it is that the Dolphins do not match up well against this Raider team. And I think one of the reasons is because the Raiders' basic philosophy is playing physical football. They want to come out there and they'll challenge you with their people and their execution. The Dolphins traditionally have wanted to play a position game, more of a finesse game. And I think that that kind of game suffers when it's matched against a very physical team. And indeed, uh, this has been a most physical game. Tom Flores will be 5-0 and against Don Shula. And the Raiders will be 14-3-1 against the Dolphins. And the only team in the NFL with a winning record in the Orange Bowl as a visitor, 5-3-1. And, and Tom Flores, the understated head coach of the Raiders, he quietly does his job and may be uh, a lot better as a head man and headmaster than he is given credit. Al Davis so often uh, gets the credit for the building of this team and even the coaching of it, but Tom Flores obviously makes a major contribution. We've watched the Raiders through their up and down season and some big losses as well as this big victory and their trip home on the aircraft tonight back to Los Angeles uh, will obviously be one of celebration and great happiness. Productive day. New England losing earlier, so that gives the Raiders a two-game lead over the Patriots for that AFC wildcard spot. We have a chance. Let's just go right through how this game developed. Do we have time? Do we have another half hour to recap all the scoring? <laughs> it, it all started with Dan Marino throwing a pass that Haynes uh, intercepted for a touchdown, 97 yards, and the record breaker Marino to Cephalo to tie it at 7 all. They came back to make a 13 7 on a Nathan run, but that's where the extra point was blocked. Allen, 11 yards, the first of his three touchdowns. The Raiders had the lead 14 13. And 
they drop on it again. Now the clock will run. No more timeouts left for the Dolphins. This game is in the book, and the Raiders have won it. Here's how it developed. Barr with a field goal of 44 yards. The goal line stand stopped the Dolphins, and the Raiders came back, and it seesawed back and forth. Clayton, a couple touchdown receptions. Williams with a long. That may have been another that may big have been play. the real backbreaker. So Marino and Howie Long, who saw each other many a time during the course of this game, and Long pressuring the brilliant young quarterback. Marino sets the all-time record, now has 40 touchdown passes, but it's an empty mark for Don Shula and the Dolphins because they go out a loser only the second time this year, and the Los Angeles Raiders, the Super Bowl champions, have shown that they certainly are a team we'll be watching carefully in the playoffs again. 45-34, we'll be back in the Orange Bowl in just a moment. <laughs> 